past my bedtime. Good thing I'm not working tomorrow. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> I might go ice fishing tomorrow. Oh yeah? Maybe. Maybe Let's see. Man. I'll charge my GoPro thing up and check and see what happens. A live um, guy. Oh man. Oh, you gotta go around. No, we got nothing for you to go around. <laughs> Alright, laptop, turn on so we can see you. Hey, where the P is, bro? Oh, they're in the garage. I'll get them. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot them. <laughs> okay, come on. Oh. Seven and. Yep. Go. On beer. I mean, not really. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, that's like it, it was more. It was, it was different. <laughs> All right, there. You can see that, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. There's I'm nothing there. Still yet. blind, but that's all right. We have one viewer. It's probably me. <laughs> we'll give everybody a chance to get in here and get going. Um, I don't want this one. Okay, which one? I think I don't know I'm they're different. <laughs> Um, I think I want that one. Which one? This one? Yeah. I had these last one? night, and it's good. They're they're all New England IPAs. You really can't go wrong with any of them. All the cool cats. All right. While we're waiting for other people to show up, we're going to go ahead and post that we are live. Because sure. that's a smart thing to do. Um, if I do that, if I click it. Yep, phone. Come on. Hear music from my headphones from all the way over here. That's hoppy. It's delicious. That's what it is. It's pretty good. Pretty all right. Sound off, and you guys get in the chat. Want to know who's already here? While we're uh, just gonna give it like five minutes tops. Hopefully, get some people in here, and then uh, we will continue on with the show. Share, copy link. Eh. Ah! This clicks for days. Tag Andrew. Hey, that's me. And here, left. I almost wrote lice. <laughs> Tag friends. Andrew Norton. Done. Post. Here. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Five viewers. Who's in here? Say hello. Where do you see that? Uh, if you look at... Ooh, seven viewers. There we go. You probably can't see that from here, can you? I'm not even... <laughs> uh, alternatively, you could look down here. Oh, hey. And it'll show you how many we're watching. We, I have, like, everything set up. I've got... Webcam here. I've got my PC back there. I've got my wife's laptop there, right behind my beer, like right there. So we're getting set up. What do we got here? Oh man, I can barely read that. Kofu, what's up? Richard, Devin, Paul, Jake. What's going on, everybody? Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate it. Give this like one to two more minutes, and then we'll really, really get started. In the meantime, cheers, sir. I already took a oh, yeah, bastard. COVID! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. Well, that's just heavenly. Uh, drink a choice for me for the night. And no, we're not really just going to talk beer, but I figured give me something to talk about. It's complicated being a wizard. <coughs> Double IPA from Burlington Beer Company. My Delicious. Is... Forget keto. All the cool cats on the bus of. The, oh, the back of the bus. On the back of the bus. I had that last night. It was pretty good. Huh. Where's the... Oh. That one. Yeah. I oh, Dude, I legitimately almost put a little sticky note up there saying, look here, so you wouldn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sir Altitude, it's always beer 30, buddy. Um, all right, we got... Damn, more people rolling in. All right, yeah, we'll give him one more minute. What's going on, Jackson? How you doing, buddy? We are... Pretty much ready to go. We've got everything. I've got everything set up. Let me know if there's any issue with either um, overall mic volume or music volume. I spent hours trying to troubleshoot everything, but it's difficult when you're not actually live. There's only so much you can do when you're just doing your own recordings and then going back through and watching it. One person bouncing back and forth. But I think I got everything that we're off to a good start. So if there's any issues, let me know. I have the chat live. For a number of reasons, but that's one of the big ones. I want to know if there's any issues. Otherwise, I think we're we're pretty much good to go. I let him set it up so I can come over and drink beer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> He's like, just let me know when to be there when it's ready. Well done. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Travis. Travis Rocket. Hi, Travis. How are you? All right. 
that's good enough. We're going to start. And uh, yeah, we're already up to 18 people. That's pretty good for the first off of this. Welcome to Real Northern... Wow, I almost... Yeah, no. Real Northern Bass Talk. We just decided on this name earlier, so it's going to take a while for it to hammer into my dumb head. This is going to be the first episode of a weekly live stream that we're going to do where we can talk all things bass fishing, but specifically northern bass fishing, northeast bass fishing, because that's where we are. There's just not enough information out there, I feel, which is kind of the reason why I started the channel anyway. And that's where all the knowledge base is. Everybody does southern crap. So we're going to try and take care of the whole northern half of the country and, and really especially the northeast. That's the goal with this. The other added benefit to this is I can keep current. You know, people that watch my channel on a regular basis know that I always fall behind at some point on videos. Where I end up, like, even right now, I'm a month behind. Um, but I'm going to catch up in, like, a week. So, this allows us to go a little bit more in-depth into what not only we did last weekend, but, like, plans we're going to do for this weekend. And we're a little ahead of schedule for that. But, you know, there's still a ton of things we can still talk about between now and the start of open water season, which... For us in southern New Hampshire, is in like six to eight weeks. Yeah, but we haven't stopped. Okay, we haven't stopped. So it's good because a lot of what we're doing, even though it's winter fishing and very cold water, is still applicable to what you're going to be doing in the first two weeks of spring. So it's all good. It's all helpful. With that being said, let's get into it. Episode one, we're going to recap what we did in 2020. What we liked best, some of our favorite moments, favorite trips we did, and favorite baits. And you kind of can't see them, but everything ended here under the logos just behind it. Tons of baits. Maybe not tons. But. Half ton. Half ton. All the stuff that we're really excited about that uh, we had a phenomenal time with. Before we get started, I'm going to be that type of person because I have goals for this channel. But it's really hard to do that without community help. So I'm going to ask, if you're here and you're enjoying it, please like it. Bonus points if you go ahead and share the stream. Like, I've been doing YouTube in some fashion since 2009 and growth through community support is the absolute number one best way to do things so if you guys are willing to help us out sharing the stream dropping a like you know commenting like literally any level of interaction in that regard helps hugely if you're already subscribed make sure you turn on notifications too although in this case the live stream is going to be consistent that's the only thing i can promise to be consistent on eight o'clock p.m eastern standard time every thursday now, I'm done talking. I've already said enough. I'm going to put Andrew on the spot. We're going to roll right into recapping 2020, and I want to start with our favorite trips. Favorite trip. Favorite I've been thinking about it trips. all day, and I can't even, like, put... There's two that stand out to me. The first one would be the day that we went out and we threw these in the spring. So, he picked the same first day I was going to point out. What are these? Bullwake. Well, what's left? What's left of his? What's left of mine? <laughs> I own this thing. For, I don't even know. Maybe two months. We both bought them Three at months? the 2020 New England Fishing Expo in Boxborough, Mass. So I had it. Well, I did. I fished it maybe what six or seven times, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Which, all things considered, where we were throwing it and <laughs> what we were throwing it against. <laughs> That's against it. like a dog uh, yeah a dog <laughs> so real quick no pick that back up I just, one thing i want to talk about because the, the paint scheme is is kind of important to this notice how his is much more problematic than mine oh i've just got like traditional rash whereas his peeled off i actually know the guy that painted mine eon paintworks on instagram uh, i think it's e.o.n underscore paintworks something to that effect Wicked nice guy. He's the one that painted mine. Um, when Buka sold all these things at the expos, he had like a handful of different guys painting these baits. Uh, but they had a problem in production where that was happening with a lot of baits. Um, where the release agent that they use on you know, like the raw pour so they can get it out of the mold more easily and cleanly wasn't thoroughly washed off or <clears throat> could not be washed off. There was a slight issue that got it fixed, but unfortunately his was one of the few that made it through. That result in the paint literally flaking off. There, there is a lot of hook rash, hook lash, in it from scraping or casting or whatever. But it just started flaking off. It was still catching fish, no problem at all. Yep. So I, I digressed, but go ahead and go into the details of why that was your favorite day or a standout day for 2020. Right. Well, we went there with a plan and executed it perfectly. It was like. 
clockwork. We get there, we're like, we're gonna get to this one spot, we're gonna throw this bait, we're gonna, we're, and we're just gonna catch big fish all day. I posted, oh, did I, I added in some sort of video I, I put on Instagram when I looked down into the live well. I was like, hey, how many do we have? You're like, four. And, oh, they're, yeah. and they're all that. <laughs> and they're all fours. And all on that. That was the tail end of that week that I fished seven straight days and I had at least one four pounder every single day in that seven day stretch. We had what, four or five fours over four that day, I think. We had four over four and you had one that was like three pounds, 14 ounce or something yeah, like that. It was, it was just ridiculous. behind it. And now that was the last day and it was actually, we had not a snowstorm coming in, but something kind of close to that. It was like sleet. Oh, it was like a hurricane it was moving up the coast. Oh yeah. Then we fished Friday after work. It was rainy, windy. It, it was, was yeah, no, just ugly. a sh bad day. <laughs> we got off the water, what, like an hour? Probably an hour took, before. But we had to go super slow. Super duper slow. Because of where we were. Yeah, but it was, that was a good day. Yeah, it was. We pushed it right until the very last minute, too. Like, it was almost dark, and if we, we if it was <laughs> dark, that would have been bad. Yeah, where we were, you, you need light to really be able to safely navigate that area. But that was nuts, because we went and fish there's one particular spot that i've been fishing for many a year and there's like three tiers to where how this water breaks down you've got like the main lake and it necks down to like a pool one and it's like five to six feet deep all the way through that and then that necks down into like another like pool two um which is maybe half the size of what i would call pool one no like maybe only like a quarter the size of pool one and yeah. that's like two to three feet throughout. And there's vegetation everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then that necks down a final third time into what I would call pool three, which is like a third of the size of pool two. So, you know, it's already condensed down in pool one to a pretty small area to pool two to pool three. Pretty much. We were pretty much just pushing them and funneling them up into this one area. And yep. it, it just, it just worked out really well. But then the bite stopped. And we were talking to ourselves oh, for like yeah. like half an hour, like what the hell is going on? Where'd these fish go? And then, oh, yeah, they, hey, let's just try over there. Yeah, we just <laughs> we're like, well, okay, if they're not pushing in, then they're gonna be pushing out. But they couldn't have gone that far because, like, the distance from the neck of into the last smallest pool to the neck at the next one is only a couple hundred feet, and then from that neck back to like the first neck where you go from main lake to the smallest part, it's like another yards. couple hundred feet. Yeah, it's yards. it's a pretty even and consistent distance from neck to neck to neck. But we didn't think they were going to push past that first neck because then they're in main lake. And, you know, we're at this point, we're talking like very late stage pre-spawn. They're moving up. They want to spawn, but the water temp just isn't quite getting there. So we moved back and he was like, hey, let's try over there because we haven't done that yet. That was a good call. <laughs> yeah, and we so we we went out. We kind of went along the shoreline and kind of cast up. There was like a rock ball that came through. We were throwing at everything. So then we decided to turn around and start throwing out in the open, in the middle of absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden, boom! And then one after another, one after they were all three to four and a half pounds. Yep. Three and a half to four and a half pounds. It was insane. That was. This is actually one of the very few baits that. I worked out the cadence. Usually it's Andrew because he's much more patient and slower than I am. Um, but I also had the benefit of, again, fishing seven straight days. Um, this was in April. So it was like kind of at the the beginning um, height spike of COVID. So everybody was working from home. My wife's a hairdresser, so she was just done because the state shut all hairdressers down and kids were home. And I was like, can I go fishing after work? And she's like, I don't care. That's Saturday. I went out to one of my favorite spots and I caught like a four on the jig. And then Sunday, I think I did the same thing. And then I caught a four on this, the wake. And I threw that. I went back to the same pond every day until Friday. And I kept throwing this. And you joined me one night. I think it was on Wednesday night in that stretch. What are we talking about? Uh, the pond of which we do not speak. Okay. And we went back to the spot and um yep yep, yep. oh knows. yeah this and was actually that night was when you did that is when, <laughs> so this is what it usually is supposed to look like <laughs> yeah that's gone <clears throat> i found a dock yeah you found a dock twice <laughs> twice you're right you're right i did and i found a four and a half but oh 
<laughs> so, and that was one of the other things. Um, I don't, I'm trying to make sure I kind of keep everything chronologically right. But, like, I, I was already, like, into a pattern, into a spot. I told him, I was like, we're going to go here. I'm going, yeah, first cast, because I've already caught a four every time I've been back here. And the night before, I caught a, I'm positive it was a five, because every fish I've weighed on that scale ever since has been off by, like, a third of a pound. And that night, I weighed 4.79 pounds on my old crappy scale. I'm pretty sure I screwed myself out of a five for the year. Yeah, but I bet you did. Um, it Yeah, it is what it is. But I caught it on that. So I was like, dude, just throw it in there. Boom. First cast. He hooks into a good one. And I think it was that same night. Like, I, I don't know if I can get this close enough. Is that, is that up at the top when I did that? Top yep. to the left? So there is clear, minimally clear difference. I mean, definitely in style from the bottom hook to the top hook. I had a fish hit this damn thing so hard in that spot. It snapped the treble right out. The eyelet from the that. split ring. That's the first time I've ever had a hook do that. And they're gamakasus. They're not like little baby hooks. They're stout. But, yeah. And then we wrapped it up with uh, one final trip on the Friday before that major storm. And we just, Hammered like, them. slow turning the reel. And just hearing the most violent explosion you can imagine. Blowing up that wake bait. It was amazing. Yeah. It, <laughs> Thank it, you, I Devin. <laughs> If you look back on the YouTube channel and his videos, you'll see the the um, well, thumbnail, whatever. <clears throat> it's us too on like a cloudy day, just holding up for four us. fours. That's the video. That was the day. The last day. The last day. Yeah, and actually we got lucky too because my GoPro caught almost every single strike on that bait. The uh, yeah, that bait, <laughs> that wake bait. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, hey Tyler, and thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, but I do have another favorite day. Well, hang on. I set up. We were throwing the wake bait on. I remember mine. What were you throwing your wake bait on? It's gone. Oh, the red rod. It's gone. Oh, so I when I was first expanding on my rod and reel arsenal, um, Tackle Supply Depot used to run these killer sales on rods uh, every time they were discontinued, and Daiwa had these like. I think they were Team Daiwa series. And there was one that was, and I actually still have it up on the wall over there somewhere. It had aluminum reel seat, uh, aluminum thread locker, and oh, yeah, it was like Team Daiwa, Pro Daiwa, I forget. And then they had one that was blood red that I got that was a 7.3 extra heavy. And I had an old Daiwa Fuego that at this point probably would have been like 16 or 17 years old, something like that. Because I got it used. It wasn't cleaned once and it was still working great. Dude, it was mint. <laughs> That's clean now. And I, I gave it to him because I, I had bought stuff and so he was throwing that with what 20 i think it was just 20 pound cigar la red label were you still throwing on fluoro i'm having a hard time i throw everything on fluoro <laughs> yeah i think you're right um <laughs> i don't care <laughs> and then what the hell was i throwing mine on uh uh lose team lose custom pro speed stick so not their most top of the line just one step down from that i think it's like their 220 dollar series rods um what the hell was that one uh seven six heavy extra fast or something like that or moderate fast i forget which side of that fast action it's on it worked it worked great it was rated up to i think it's rated up to a two ounce rod so it worked great for what i needed it to do and i was but i was throwing mine on straight 65 pound braid because i was basically throwing my frog rod is what i was doing what kind of fish finder do you recommend for it I want to answer that question. Wait, I can't read your name. MOG Rod. Um, let's circle back on that, please, because that's kind of a loaded question, and a lot of that is dependent upon how much money you want to spend. And I actually have an idea for somebody I want to bring in for another episode on that where we can really dive into it deep. Mr. Steve from Bass Fish and Electronics. Yeah. Local guy. Yeah, he'll know everything about it. Phenomenal. When I first started getting into electronics, when I went from, you know, beyond using my graph just to read depth and water temp. And I was, um, you know, my buddy Travis Rocket, who is in here, um, him and his dad are licensed fishing guides here in New Hampshire. Travis was the one that really showed me how to use and read a graph for fish and like help better identify structure. When I wanted to take it to the next level, I called this guy Steve. And he spent two hours on the phone with me and I wasn't even planning on buying anything at the time. Breaking down the difference between Lowrance and Hummingbird and touched on Garmin a little bit. The guy knows his shit, so. Um, I, I want to answer that, but God, that is a loaded question. Um, 
get the best that you can afford for the money you have and don't be afraid of getting something used. I still have used HDS Gen 3 low rants units and they're friggin' phenomenal and you can get them stupid cheap by comparison to new stuff. That's kind of a very quick high level answer to your question. I have an old low rants. You probably have one. I don't have the box for From anymore. Like it's like first an boat. LMX something five something it's 520 like, or something weird thing like is the, old it's a dinosaur it was like the pre hds series i think as long as you know how to read a graph and you're you, i just have down imaging on mine that's all i have and 2d sonar 2d sonar not even down imaging <laughs> <laughs> it looks down that's all you need. as long as you know where to look on the graph and what you're looking at you'll be fine yep and that's time on the water watch a couple of videos they can break it down it's pretty much all you need yeah. it gets you by um so but circling back now to we're talking about this in that day you said you had one more point you wanted to talk about i had one more day one more day that i wanted to talk about okay well what point in the year was it because maybe i'll bounce to mine i don't want to i want to try what and keep it kind of chronic huh what point in the year are you well that would have been my my first one and then right on the heels of that would be um it was kind of hot out when we went Okay, so then mine would be next. Around the heels of that was me with my Vision 110s and 110 plus 2. I wasn't even there for this. Um, no, you weren't. One was the New Hampshire Brownie Factory, and then the other one was the Vermont Brownie Factory. All right. So. I'll shut up now. Here. My next, <laughs> you don't need a mortgage for a fish. Uh, hang on. Travis is absolutely right. You do not need a mortgage for a fish finder. Um, absolutely positive. And. Donk Swampy. Yeah, dude, if Donk there's... Swampy. Donk Swampy. <laughs> Donk. I love it. <laughs> if, dude, Spotlock, I've said this to him. I've said this to my friend Kristen when, excuse me, she just bought her tracker. I said it to my buddy John uh, Emery, the owner of Wicked Custom Rods, and he went and bought one. If there's any one thing, if my fucking boat burnt down in a fire tomorrow and I had to replace everything on 50% of the money that I had, I would make sure that I had a bought the most boat that I could with an Ultrax. I would literally forgo all electronics just for the Fortrex. Or the Ultrax with spot lock. Or any trolling motor that has that spot lock feature. That's how good that one friggin' feature is on the trolling motor. And I'll I'll die by that. I can I made things work with a good pair of polarized sunglasses for fucking decades before I even got my first fish finder. Because I did a ton of shallow water fishing and I keep doing that. And then I know general areas where I want to be for deep water that that, but oh my God, that spot lock is worth it. We're getting sidetracked. Um, no, I don't keep my boat inside and just make sure you drain your motor. When you get out of the water, tilt it all the way down. Let it sit that way for five to 15 minutes and tilt it up, tilt it down. Make sure there's no water in it. Good to go. And I got that straight from my mechanic. Things I found online. A lot of evidence to corroborate that to make it, dude, it's, that's all you gotta do. Back on point. <laughs> Another day, it was actually twofold. I think the first one... Now I can't remember where I went. So there was two specific trips that were very close to each other. One was to the Brownie Factory here in New Hampshire, and then the um, next trip was to what we now call the Brownie Factory in Vermont. And mm -hmm. we, <laughs> we get a lot of crap from people when we say that, but we, you know, like, I, I do that so I don't blow up spots. Um, I do what I can to not blow up not super well-known areas. Um, people that know where we fish know what we're talking about some understand it some get a kick out of it other things other people think we're retarded whatever um i don't want to be the guy that gets blamed for blowing shit up everybody thinks i'm retarded so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll start with the new hampshire one anybody that knows me as focused on what i've said over the years knows how much this damn bait has caused me grief over the years Except for like the last two years. And I finally got to a point where it wasn't just like, okay, I know a jerkbait's supposed to work and I stumbled with kind of a couple of fish. Like, I went out to places where a jerkbait could have worked, but the conditions were right for like other baits that could have worked. And those other baits were working, but then the conditions shifted. And I thought, okay, this is where a jerkbait really should excel on based on what I know. And I threw it out and it worked. It did exactly what it was supposed to do with the right cadence. Like I figured it out right off the bat and then I got into a bunch of fish. And that first time, I'm pretty sure it was at New Hampshire Brownie Factory. And it was with this, the Vision 110 and that rainbow trout pattern. And 
like they were hitting the Nedrig like crazy. They're all up shallow, but then that bite just kind of shut off, even though the conditions didn't really change. And then I saw fish chasing our baits back to the boat when we were burning it back. And actually, I was with Travis Rocket for one of these trips too. I was with Travis first, and then I went with John for the second trip. And I said to him, I was like, dude, I think they'll need a jerk bait, but I think if you work, it's gonna work. And it did. So go up there and just fucking crack, 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 like 10 times, and then kill it, and it slam it. Cast out, do it again. Crack, 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 and stop. And they eat it. Um, and I did that twice. And I actually lost a really good fish, too. I think it was with, I can't remember if it was with Travis or John. Yeah, it was with John. Was it? I'm pretty sure. When I was down by the uh, the road? I think so. Yeah, yeah right in that little pocket. Um, and then, so same deal, but this time on the 110 plus two in this, like, ghost perch pattern at the Vermont Brownie Factory. But I started with it. And right off the friggin' bat, got into it. Um, and actually, this is my favorite for, like, largemouth, that GP Bro Blue or whatever color it is. It's kind of um, similar to the other one. It is. The only thing that uh, Allegheny Bone... Oh, I just realized that's the one with, like, the treble hook in the middle that I cut up. Um, the Allegheny Bone has got that chartreuse strip on the belly. Yeah. This is just the GP Bro Blue, where it's that blue on the back. And then it's got, like, a little ghostish yellow purple in the belly. And that's basically it. I have worked harder than anything in my life to get confident in a jerkbait. And I finally strung together, like, three really good trips, two on a lake that I'm already extremely familiar with and very confident, comfortable and confident with, and a lake I'd never been to, and I caught a four and a quarter pounder on, like, my second cast of this jerkbait, and I caught a bunch more. And then I watched my buddy Travis catch a four and a quarter largemouth um, in, like, 50 feet of water suspended on the regular 110. So it was, it was just good, but that that thing got lit up by the smallmouth on the brownie factory, and uh, it actually worked again another day. I forget where we were, but it I, wasn't anything I like worked, memorable. It just worked. I worked this thing hard this year, because this was the first year that I ever went, and I was like, I'm never gonna buy a Vision 110. I'm never gonna buy anything mega bass, just because it's too expensive, and, and I can you prove, buy it. <laughs> I can prove you all wrong with oh, the, with all the cheap shit. Yeah, I mean, look how good these freaking hooks are. <laughs> <laughs> Sticks himself. <laughs> These things are insane. Um, MLG Rod, my favorite pond to fish shall be unnamed. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't share pond names for a v number of reasons. Um, primarily, they're super pretty obvious. They're small places. I fish a lot of small ponds. And my favorite one is very small. And I'm not going to blow that spot up. Never. Um, Mine's smaller. Oh, fishing <laughs> mode. You gotta... Yeah, well, no, everybody knows yours is smaller. Um, <laughs> yell at your dad. Don't put the boat away. You're putting it away way too early, especially this year. My fish are bigger. <clears throat> um, Devin, you're absolutely right. GG Pro Perch plus one is next on my list. I gotta fill out my jerk baits with a couple of the juniors, the plus ones. Like, I want... Like, the rainbow trout, the blue, and the perch are really the only three colors I need. And there's another color, but I'm not gonna talk about it because it works really well. Actually, two. Remember that day you smoked me when we were on a really good jerkbait bite at Brownie Factory two years ago? <laughs> and then well, you pulled like, out well, that I weird, like, throw this thing. holographic-y kind of looking thing. How do you think about this one? Right. And then, yeah. And there's another color that I use really that works well, but I'm not going to... That's mine. Um, <laughs> oh, what the hell was I going to say? Sorry, read and chat make sure I'm keeping up. But I think we're okay on that. So... Long story short, my answer is kind of twofold from my next, my one of my most memorable trips was basically back-to-back -back trips to the New Hampshire Brownie Factory, followed immediately by a trip to the Vermont Brownie Factory on crazy good jerkbait bite. And I, I finally, between, like, two years ago, I finally strung together a couple of trips, and they're all relatively close. And the one we just talked about where we pulled out that crazy color was, like, the aha moment. And I built on that. And then these three trips just fucking sealed it i finally like i can go out there and if you're telling me it's gonna be a jerk bait bite i'm actually gonna be happy about it for once i'm always happy about it because now i have the confidence in that that i do everything else and that was big for me because literally everything else i picked up in one season i've been trying to get confident in a jerk bait for like eight fucking years now and that's coming from a guy where no joke the third fish i ever caught on one was a five pound smallmouth <laughs> back in like Oh, shit. When was that? 2011? 2012? 65. <laughs> right back when. <laughs> Dad? <laughs> Tell me those fishing stories. <laughs> so, that's my long-winded answer about what was my next memorable trip. And uh, this is actually kind of working out. I was originally thinking we were going to do, like, memorable trips and then baits. But this is working. How it's all blending. 
Yeah, I like it. Much more seamless. It's funny so. how our favorite baits are our memorable trips. Yeah. It's weird. Although it's funny because I've got a bait here that's not a favorite bait, but it's from a memorable trip, and I have to bring it up. And it's probably going to be dead last. No, we'll be dead last. I don't even have a bait from a memorable trip. Well, what is... Okay, so what was next on your list for your most memorable trip? Scat. Huh? Scat. Scat. When we spent... I, no. Oh, okay. Oh! 2020, I know where, I know where you July. are. Yep. We went... This is the stupidest thing. We went out because... <laughs> all right. It started <laughs> off with a dad joke. <laughs> Pissed. I have nothing against night fishing. I made some memes. I joked around about it. I bust somebody's balls. Uh, many people's balls. Um, I have nothing against it. Dude, I did it myself for fucking years. For like 15 years before I even thought about doing anything with a GoPro before. Um, because I had a John boat. And I hated fishing in the middle of the day with a thousand other people. And it was nice to go out in the middle of the summer. Just me and a buddy. And go drag a jig in a foot of water. And just get fucking smoked by fish all night. It was the greatest thing. I have nothing against night fishing. So, with that, we went out to the spot to go night fishing. But we got out there, like, kind of early just because... I think we got out there, what? Like, 5 o'clock? Not even. I think we were out there, like, 3. We yeah, were, so, like, it was, somewhere between 3 and 4. Because we fished before the sun went down for a few hours. Yeah. And we hammered them. We started off... Dude. I think I started throwing, like, a shaky head or something. I think it was a shaky head. With this long, stupid... I don't even remember. It was a robo worm on a shaky head. Yeah. The chartreuse five inch brown. Worm. Yeah. And which five inch the first worm on a, ro- on a first shaky head? cast. We we were in like three feet of water, not even. Boom. And we see this fish go. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's right Boom. off the launch. <laughs> you sight fished that when you saw him cruising. You cast out in front of him and you caught him. That was awesome. And, and then, then I, yeah, I think I did it too. You did. I'm pretty sure you did. And then, what was our total number? That was our best number. Before the sun went down, we had like 35 or 40 fish on the boat. Yeah, just and like a two-hour window, basically. Yeah. And then we fished all night to, what, four in the morning? Dude, with this again. And, and actually, I finally got, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. Did I, did I, was I throwing this or was um, I throwing this? Oh, I should have backed up. I was That's throwing okay. this. Yeah, you were throwing the rat. This was already broken, so I was throwing this, which wasn't broken yet. And that's going to knock, like a pronounced knock, unlike my bull wake, which really doesn't knock that much. But then I'm going to talk about this duber in a minute because uh, I'll back it up. But I got a couple bites on that. For all you budget people. <sighs> Can't beat that thing. Okay. This thing, the purple, the stupid ass purple BBZ whatever rat, 50, 1,500. Oh, I don't even know what size it is. What size is it? That's, that's the, the 50? 50? Yep. So even though it is completely destroyed this thing has caught me so many fish over the years I and mean, this isn't my first one but it is i've caught i'd say 90 percent of my night fish have been on this and i've caught a lot of big fish yeah, over yeah. four pounds on this things is insane just slow roll it and it's got that it's not one of those hundred hundred dollar whatever no things like 35 bucks? I don't I think. even think it's that much. I think they're like 25 now. Yeah. I'm about to go stock up again. <laughs> and you lost what was likely your biggest fish of your life. I'd say. I'm sorry for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about it earlier when I had this. I, would, I think about that fish, I don't know, maybe once or twice a month. It. <laughs> Richard, you're going to be drunk. He said he's going to take a drink every time you hook yourself. <laughs> I can drink up, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that fish. We were fishing the pond of which we do not speak of. And I came around the point of this point, and I cast up, and I was like, yeah, I caught maybe a few fish during the day in that spot, and I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll toss it up in there. It hit, I thought it was a beaver, and then I saw it come out of the water, its head shook, and its mouth was a basketball. If Swimbait Scrutiny is still here in the chat, he knows what we're talking about because I told him about it. Okay. We, we were talking about that spot like right after it happened. And yeah, that came up. I just sat <clears> on my you're boat. You're not the only one, by the way. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> I sat on my boat um, and I just waited because he was in his boat around the point and I just waited. I just sat down. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I was in tears. <laughs> back it up, though. Because where, where are we going? You were talking about the okay. day on the shaky head. All right. So that 
that day. Ugh, where do we begin? <laughs> we fished all night and caught even more. But then, barely any. Like, I mean, we kind of had to work hard for it. Oh, yeah. And then, <laughs> and the, then you hooked. The lady? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had their John boat, like, butted up against their dock and, like, a 30 foot rope, like, trailing out in the water and then all the way back and wrapped around the dock. It wasn't tied and you hooked it. Catch that thing. <laughs> so, we're sitting there trying to be as quiet as we could. It's like 1 30 in the morning. And he's trying to get this out. And all of a sudden, I hear the screen door, light comes on. Like, Excuse me, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. We're just, and I was like really quiet. I, was like, we're just, I explained what happened. And she's like, oh, okay. And she was really nice. She went back in. And I looked at him and I was like, it's pretty fucking ballsy of her to come out. And she's just like, in the what morning. are you guys doing out here? Right. <laughs> like, you hear a crazy ass noise out your dock. And you just walk out and stand underneath a light with it. No, the situational awareness. She just opened the door. The lights weren't even on. She, I thought she turned the outside light no. on. No, <laughs> she just came out. What are you doing? <laughs> like, oh, sorry. We're just trying to steal your sh your shit. <laughs> yeah, she was nice though. Yeah, she was cool. Yeah, w dude. I think we ended up with like sixty plus fish for that trip. I mean, yeah, that was good. Easily. Yep. I even had a couple on the chatterbait. When you saw that first one that you threw the shaky head at, mm -hmm. I didn't even have the GoPro set up. We got out, and I wasn't thinking we were going to catch anything right after launch. So I was like, yeah, let's just fish for a minute, and I'll, I'll set up the GoPros after. I think we had like five or six fish, and a couple of them were good. Before we, the mo we shut the motor off. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then we set it up, and then it was like, a, of course, there was like a 30-minute lull. Then we moved over to a rock pile and just fucking hammered them. We sat on that rock pile for probably two hours. Yeah, I'd say two hours. And we just... Every rock, yep. probably two or three fish off. I'm, doing, I'm <laughs> looking insane. at the 360, I'm like, rock there, fish. Rock there, fish. <laughs> it was nuts. Um, mm, no, Jackson, we don't really trout fish. Before I go further, let me back it up. There was a question. Oh, uh, no, Donk Swampy, that is not it, but I know what pond you are trying to tell me about. I've actually never been there. Um, Rocky Ledge Tackle fucking phenomenal company they make well, i'm looking at the mic they make phenomenal spinner baits best in the business someone asked what is your setup you throw a jerk bait on i'm gonna answer first okay. seven foot medium rod with 10 pound floral simple as that yeah pretty much yeah, pretty much i like I, I like fast action like i like it to be really snappy i actually like it a little softer because i had that old team diva rod i was mentioning it's a fiberglass rod which is actually what you want for Trouble hook fishing, crankbaits, jerkbaits, whatever. That's what I've been told. And it was a little stiff for my liking. It was kind of a heavy rod anyway. So then I went and switched to my um, Lose Team Lose Custom Pro Speed Stick. They then that $220 tier rod. That's a seven foot medium moderate action, I think. It's kind of a spongy rod, but I like it. It's perfect. I can fucking sling a jerkbait, even the regular 110. And it's got good action to it. I feel like I can actually work a jerkbait really well. Um, six three to one ratio. I think I'm still throwing it on my Shimano Sitica. I think it's the oldest reel I own now. It's like ten years old. Bought it brand new. The thing still works. Meant never cleaned it once because I'm a jackass. <laughs> I don't clean reels until they start making funny noises. And then I just throw them out and buy a new. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Nah, I just keep do. using them until they break on a freaking striper. I need to get a Lanciotti, but but um, I'll, I'll get one eventually. I'll circle back to Lanciotti and big swim baits because I have another one I want to talk about. So. I'm actually going to back it up a couple weeks. Not even. It's like a week. Father's Day. That's the end of June. June so there was, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was the weekend before the 60-day shaky head fish. We're 60 fish shaky head day we were just talking about. Um, get it together. <laughs> I shouldn't have started drinking this early. I'm a hot mess. I went out um, Father's Day with my dad and my uncle. And it's the first time I fished with the two of them. Oh, yeah, you killed it that day. Yeah, in like two years. And we went to my favorite pond, um, and I got there, like, he, my dad was like, let's get there for 9.30. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll meet you there. And I was on the water by, like, I think 6. So it was kind of a late start for me for the middle of the summer. And I had just picked up this not too long ago. I'm looking at the wrong thing. And I stuck myself. Ha, Take drink. a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Help. There we go. This is uh, DEFCON from a guy named Rich LeBlanc down out of Massachusetts. This is actually one from his personal stash. I was trying to get one from one of his latest builds, and I missed out again. And it was happening to me on Facebook one day, and he dropped this with, like, three others from his personal stash. This is one of the original ones, I think, from this design that he had um, 
made and he just was like i have too many i'm getting rid of it it's a shallow diving basically crank down swim bait it's six inches if i really rip on it i can get it down like three feet but i don't do that i can slow crawl and you get the most sexy sultry swim out of this thing and it'll go down about a foot which is fucking perfect for a lot of lakes i fish because it's loaded to death with weeds just subsurface so I can slow roll the hell out of this, get it submerged, but keep it just over the top of that vegetation. Um, and if I'm working shallow rocks, it bumps off it fucking beautifully. It doesn't get stuck on anything, it just crashes over. It's basically like a giant oversized shallow running square bill. But big. Thing works. Mint. It works mint. So I go out to this spot, waiting for my dad and my uncle, and I go to my favorite point, which is right next to where you caught that 6.36 last year. Year before. Six, where they get no, it was six. into 2019 with Kristen. That was a six. Six even. No, it was... Ah, oh, whatever. The six, it was three, a six. six. The 636 six was on a square bill. Now, so it was that the day of the jerkbait oh, with Kristen. That was a jerkbait, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, I went out and there's a, a nice point and a couple of boulders that are like 20, 30 feet off the point. Rolling this thing by and just stop. I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, I didn't know really how I should set the hook with this because I hadn't caught a fish on it yet. But I'm thinking, like, oh, treble hook. So I just eased into it. It was like a three and a half pounder. It's like, sweet. I'm looking at the hooks. I'm like, that's fucking stupid. I can just, like, you know, snooze hooks at it. <laughs> Third cast after that, get a hook, get a bite, slam. <laughs> like another three pounder. It's like, holy shit, that's two really good fish. And then my dad and my uncle show up. So I go back to the boat launch and I'm, I'm showing him this thing. There's a. At a point when I was about 20, I got away from doing what my dad still does. And there's nothing wrong with it, but I, I needed more. He just Texas rigs. Four-inch worm, that's it. And that's all I knew for my life until I was about 20. I started branching out. And he he does it lovingly and jokingly. But he's busting my balls already when he sees this. He's like, that's yeah, fucking stupid. That thing's bigger than the fish we're going to catch. <laughs> I was like, you'd be surprised what eats it. Maybe you're a fish, old man. <laughs> <laughs> I caught, between the three of us, that was actually... I think the second best day for numbers out of the whole season. We caught like 65 fish between the three of us. I had the most. I had, I think, 25 of those were myself. 15 of them were over three pounds. Which for New Hampshire is pretty damn good to catch that many fish over three pounds. Every single one was a largemouth, and every single one that was over three pounds came on that thing. And every bite was that bite you fucking dream about, where it just stops dead and you just feel boom, boom, from the head shakes. Um... And then I actually caught a couple more that were these little dink things. I mean, seriously, like a 12 inch bass ate that like halfway up the back of the bait. You know, came up and grabbed it all the way up here and got that rear treble. And I both flipped him in. My dad looks at me and he just shakes his head. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle is bigger into like fishing bigger baits, moving baits and stuff. So he was all about it. And he was hyped for it. And my dad just kind of chuckled. He's like, ah, whatever. It, it, to be fair to my dad, he switched baits like two hours into the day and he started kicking my ass until I figured out where to be throwing this. And then I turned the tables a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but my dad, my dad is a good angler. He's, he's patient and he, he just knows how to work a Texas rig bait better than anybody. Um, obviously not. You get what I'm saying. So it was just a phenomenal day because it was the first time I'd fished with my dad and my uncle in two years. I got to this new bait, which is the most expensive I've ever owned at 125 bucks for that one bait. But it floats, and that's the only reason why I spent that much. I won't spend it that much money on something that doesn't float so I can get it back. And I broke it off a couple of times. And we just fucking hammered them. And it was great. Like, every rock we pulled up onto after, like, 10 o'clock was, like, that was it. Just find isolated big boulders, and literally every single one we were catching fish off of. We could, we, like... I think they would be off the water by one. That was the original intention. It's like 3.30. Like, okay, yeah, we should probably go. <laughs> <laughs> I love those days. Yeah, but that was that was my next most memorable day. And I'm I've had a bunch, guy. but like that's... <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio from Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> I'm not fucking leaving! <laughs> we've, had, we've had a few of those days this year. Dude, we really you gotta be have. on the road by one. Fuck, it's two. <laughs> <laughs> and we're an hour from the boat launch. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's so that was my next one. And then, so that puts us in June, and then you just talked about Shaky Head Day. That puts us in July. What's next? I'm Same bad with timelines. You're, oh, yeah. Yeah, fuck that, please. <laughs> it was memorable, but not in a good way. Although, we did, uh, it was not good. No matter how we cut it, it was fun, but it was tough. 
And the only thing I can think of that was memorable was that one four, the biggest one of the week, the whole trip. I want to talk about my big one. We both lost. We lost giants. We, we each lost one that was easily over five. Easily. Yours, I don't know. Yours, just, I, I didn't. Even, I didn't see it. I saw, dude. It was not even ten feet from the boat. It was a five. It would have been the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught. And then we didn't even get to see that one that broke me off on the rock. Well, we saw the one I lost. Uh huh. We both did. Yeah, and that then, thing jumped three feet in the air. Fucking blue limp. Yeah. On a... We don't even have one. Spy bait. Spy bait. Did the same one? Mm, no. But... Same thing. Same same principle. A little bit different. Well, I mean, a little darker. This is the one I used. With this little duber. Jackson, my PB Smalley is five pounds even. Hey! So is his. Prick. <laughs> <laughs> so we... Dude, we had a year-long tournament between myself, Andrew, our buddy Travis, um... Kyle, Lauren, and Will. There's six of us. And the Vermont Brownie Factory was killing it for me for my big small mouth. And I brought him. Thank you. 410. 4 pounds 10 ounces. 4 pounds 14 ounces. 5 pounds even. Two days after I caught my 5 pound even to tie my PB. I'll just take first. Thank you very much. <laughs> He's like, there's a PB. There's a PB. There's a PB. He broke his PB. No, twice. I've caught it. I, yeah, I beat it twice. Yeah, because your other one was from that small pond the first I beat, time we fished. I beat my PB twice there that day, too. That's right. Dude, he's reset his PB smallmouth four times this season. Quality fish-wise, 2020 kicked ass for us. <laughs> yeah, we fucking smoked him. We had a good... Every year we, we get on to a handful of good fish, but for some reason this year it was just... It was good. It was. I caught a 636, a 604, a 527, a 530, a... Oh, sir. I don't even remember. I got you. You keep talking. I can't Just talk. kidding. I, I, right I ran out of numbers to say. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it was a good year for us for quality. I was one good largey, like one six pounder away from getting first. But. You were right behind me by point zero seven pounds for yeah. best five. So you had a six three six. So now it's all decimal pounds. Six three six, six zero four, five three one, five two nine, and four six nine. Five two nine is what I mean. I had seven three one, five five four four, five nineteen, five zero six, four seven six. Which is your PB? Which is my PB. It was a good year for the B, the PBs. Um, what the fuck are we talking about? We're, we're like we're getting so sidetracked, but in like the best way possible. Um, I keep yeah, smallmouth freaks. He knows. Hey, what are you doing right now? Smashed him today? Oh, you went down to the river again, didn't you? You cheeky bastard! <laughs> I guarantee he's gonna tell me. He's gonna. I went like down. I got like a hundred and ninety-two. And he probably got like a fucking thirty-five incher just I... so he could beat yours. <laughs> yeah, but I got two of them, so. Mm. Mm. Okay, so arrest me. <laughs> um, what were we talking about before we got sidetracked by PBs, smallmouth PBs? Well, uh, oh, we were talking St. Lawrence River, um, and just smallmouth in general. Okay, so fuck, fuck St. Lawrence River. That's I don't want to go back there. Um, that hurts my soul. That last fish. Anybody it, that watched the whole series knows, dude. That that last fish. I, <laughs> yeah, I was. I like lost. I was like, ah, it's okay. It's okay. Dying inside. <laughs> 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 I don't want to talk about it anymore. Um, all right, what was your next most favorite? So after that, would actually be your um, that small place we went to when you were in your boat. Yeah. And I gave you one of my GoPros. What are the fucking odds? Seriously. One of the days that it's rare that we're both at the same pond in our own boats. And it's literally the only time, like, I was just like, wait a minute, why don't you just take one of my GoPros? I was fishing 20 minutes down the road, and he's like, well, I'm going to go try here. I'm like, all right, I'll meet you there. So I got out, and I... I had already caught a couple of fish at the other place, and I already had all my smallie stuff. And he, I show up, so we start small, fishing this place for smallies, and I'm like, oh, whatever, we'll try it. And he's like, what'd you say? <laughs> Here, try this. Yeah. He owes me a lot. I'm just saying. I'm kidding. Wouldn't matter for shit if he didn't know what he was doing. Um, I had rigged up all my spinning rods, and I realized that I had the... You want to just pick it up? It's right there. It's, it's that color. Fucking gorgeous. <laughs> I had two of these tied on the Beast Coast Hustler in dirt bag. Just by chance. Like, I, I forget. Oh, because I got a new rod from Wicked Custom Rods, and it was uh, my new tube rod. It isn't a tube rod per se, but it could be used for, you know, that was what Will was telling me, like, when he had this. He's like, it's really great for cracking three quarter ounce tubes. But it's rated down to 3.8. So it's just like a heavy duty kind of shorter spinning rod 
So, without really looking at my other rods, I tied on a new rod. And I looked down, and I was like, fuck, I've got two Hussars tied on. And I know he's only got the one spinning setup. But like, he came over and I'm like, dude, just take this. Throw it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, let's just see what happens. Here, you try this. I always feel like the asshole. No, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. I don't have a soul left anyway. It's fine. Okay. Well, it hurts. So, I took that, and I did work. <laughs> Got full of, uh, first time ever fishing this place. He hooked into a couple of largemouth on. You, what were you throwing? Uh, we were just throwing like a deep crank or something. Yeah, I was throwing a DT twelve, and I got one, one good fish, like three pounds, largemouth. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking to myself, like, I was talking to the GoPro, and I'm like, yeah, so this is what I want to do, and this is what I'm seeing, because I already went and side image the whole place, because it's a small place, and I was like, yeah. This is going to be mint. I'm going to throw this along the steep bank of the rocks, and it's going to work. And, like, second cast, I cast a three. I'm like, fuck yeah, it's going to be a great day. And then I caught dick after that. <laughs> and I was throwing drop shot, and I didn't get a goddamn bite on it. And then I was like, yeah, fuck it. It was kind of up by a dock, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll pick this thing up. First cast. Actually, no, I didn't even do first cast. Didn't I drop it down? I dropped down on a fish and caught, like, saw it on my graph, and I was like, oh, fuck it. Drop it down and clunk, got him. A little largey. Caught a couple more little small largies, and then I was maybe a hundred yards down the shore, and I tossed this thing out towards the dock. And apparently, I said, "Oh, I wasn't even touching. No one doing it." But I was sitting there, fucking, fucking doing this. And that was your first four point four four. I'm, I'm looking at it because I remember 4. that 4. was 4? that that was your newest PB. That would no. That no, was no. That was that at, was the other place. Sorry. That, and then this place. one was the 4.63. It's a 4.63 on this. And then an hour and a half later, I was I caught that one in 8 feet of water. And then an hour and a half later I was in 18 feet of water and I caught the 47 whatever There's four, another 46 six, something. 468. Just eight, barely bigger. I just had it. Sorry. 4 465. Four six five, and then a few weeks later we had a tournament. Oh, <laughs> oh my God! I thought I was gonna be on it with what I'll talk about later, the Beast Coast Flick. We were marking them, and I dropped down. I caught a little rat. I'm like, sweet, all right, first one's in the boat. And I caught another one, and then that thing just laughed at it and it said, "Watch this." I was like, "Hey, check this out." <laughs> four, 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 four. <laughs> just fucking big fish after big fish after big fish decimated that place yep that was awesome yeah that was man that actually when was that that yeah that was like right yeah you're right you got your two fours that day like got a the small new later, pond. we were at that place literally the first time either of us had been to that place i knew nothing about it other than i heard there was good fish and then a couple weeks after that we go and fish a tournament lake we've never been to although i did get intel from two different friends for like a couple areas to start um and Didn't we just out. patterned it together he he stumbled onto it and then like perfected it and then i jumped in on it and <laughs> i started contributing and it just and then at the end of the day <laughs> i, I got anything. onto the fluke <laughs> i and casted it, that thing out and let it sit and they were just like nope oh my god I want it. that was insane that was such a good day yeah the fluke that was cool yeah because then the conditions changed a little bit the bite died and we we're like hmm, what do we do and then i i lost one the spinnerbait and then you caught one of the jerk bait, and I was thinking, I was like, I should try the fluke because the fluke had been treating me well, and I threw that and started working like jerk baits. It's basically what it is, it's soft body jerk bait. Is it this one? Uh, I think it was, yeah. And um, I caught a couple doing that, but we were culling for an ounce at a time. It was it was down to the wire, but we still won that tournament. That was pretty nice. Yeah, we won by a lot. Yeah, like two pounds. Yeah, it was cool. Missed out on big fish though. Those guys had a nice yeah, large. Yeah, they had, they had like five and a half. Yeah, something, something like something. Dude. It's good largey. Big bucket mouth, freaking largey. Yep. We came in with a bag full of smallies <laughs> and one. <laughs> Sorry, that was boys. Such a good day. <laughs> there was one dude there that was extra salty about it. Yeah. I don't know why. Sorry, bud. Yeah. Be better. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where does that bring us to? That's like the end of September. What was another memorable day? Let me back it up. If you guys are slaying bass all winter, does it mean we shouldn't expect any ice fishing videos? So... <laughs> he beat no. me to it. No. Um, actually, yeah, before we continue on, there's a few questions. Oh, what... All right, let's answer that first. You just read it. 
I don't know. I <laughs> might go out this weekend. We'll see what the weather. Oh, it's Saturday, depending. I mean, I'm not working Saturday. I'd... I'll go out with you Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you'll expect a nice fishing video. I, I guess. I don't have it. Um, I bought the Garmin Striker Four Plus bundle, whatever the hell it is. Two hundred fifty bucks for a flasher. He got literally the same thing. <clears throat> I was waiting on that before I hit the ice. Uh, oh yeah, Striker Four, Striker Plus Four Ice Bundle. Um, I actually went out and threw it uh, for a little bit. What day was that? Sunday? Saturday? No, Saturday afternoon. I don't remember what day it was. It was this past weekend, and I went out. I had an hour, and I didn't catch anything, but nobody else did. So I tried. Um, but the thing is, like, the weather has been really nice, <laughs> and I like my boat. <laughs> it's an expensive toy, and I, I like, like to the use back it. Of his boat. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just been. We haven't had to put it away. We haven't had to stop yet. This weekend might be the first weekend where we might have to really seriously consider maybe not going out. But it's going to be dry and sunny, so it's probably not going away. And we're only two hours from the Cape. Right. Two and a half hours at most. The river's open in New Hampshire. So an hour and a half. An hour and a half. From fishing. I heard from way. Justin yesterday. I think we should go. I'm kind of tempted. We'd probably get skunked. It's going to be cold. No, Water's probably going to be like 34, 35 degrees at no, best. We're not going to get skunked. No, we probably won't. We'll figure them out. Um, there's that. Or we're going to the Cape and try our luck there. But so we'll get skunked there. Roundabout way. Eventually, yes, some ice fishing. But honestly, out of the whole scope of the season, you're talking about that much. It's going to be ice fishing. And it's not because I don't like ice fishing. It's because I love my fucking boat. <laughs> it's a very lovely toy that I like to spend all my time in. So... We'll get to it. But right now, it's just... It, my winter fishing is dictated by the conditions. Last winter, I meant to stay out as long as we had this time. But it literally snowed or sleeted or some precipitation bullshit Saturday and or Sunday. And I can only fish on Sundays because of my family situation. With my wife's work schedule and everything. So, I don't want to tow my boat 250 miles through that crap. I did it once. When we came back from the Vermont Brownie Factory and it took a fucking week to dry out. Yeah. <laughs> there was... <clears throat> There's really not much that will stop us from going out. Pretty much. I mean, we went up to New Hampshire Brownie Factory. The launch was iced over. We spent, what, 45 minutes to an hour chipping it. We drove back down the road to an Abishad and bought 500 pounds of sand. <laughs> That's great. And we Worth made it, it work. It's, you can't just give up if something's going to freaking slow you down. No, especially for something as trivial as that. Like, fuck that. Yeah, um, just ice. <laughs> so there, there's gonna be a mix there's a, a couple of ponds that are really close to me that's the other added aspect to this because it's been so mild there, there's like 20 different ponds we could fish within 20 30 minutes of my house mm -hmm. that would be great for ice we just haven't had good ice yet and i don't have a float suit so i i tend to play it way over cautious it's my life yeah <laughs> i don't want to fuck around with that um so just for a second i gotta pee Go ahead. You're, I'm going to go urinate. All right. You know where the bathroom is. No, um, so I, I just... We're getting around to it. Um, what the hell was I going to say to that? I don't remember. But that, that's basically the gist of it. There's a question there about Hustler trailers. But before I get to that, because I want Andrew to chime in on that. <clears throat> um, we, I don't know where we're going to go on Sunday. It, it, a large part of that is going to be dictated by wind. I can deal with cold. I can deal with a long drive. Wind, when the current forecasted high is only going to be in the upper teens, that's kind of a deal breaker. Uh, I don't have insulated gear. I have a lot of layers, but I don't have insulated gear. That that makes a big difference. And I have a real problem with keeping my hands warm. Um, my feet also, but really my hands, which as you can imagine is kind of important when you're fishing. So if the wind's howling, you know, I bought like a nice buddy heater and that has made a world of a difference for keeping my hands warm on the boat and I've got some decent gloves that at least break the wind, but you know, they're not insulated or anything, so it's it's touch and go. At the very least, should be able to get out on the ice on Saturday. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I haven't been to Singletary yet. Thorndike and Jaffrey, I know of it, I haven't been to that one. Cheshire County, minute. there's a few places out Wait there. Wait a minute. No, you went there. Wait a minute. That was the day that I caught the, that we went to that place yep. and I caught those you two caught a fish couple. on this. Yeah. Um, Mountain View Dam is down there, dude. I used to fish Mountain View, Mountain Brook Reservoir. Um, I think I fished that place a hundred times, almost entirely out of my John boat. 
Uh, but I actually brought my bass boat there a few times. I actually took my bass boat there this year. I didn't think about that. Was that this year? Yeah, because there's another pond down the road, which I don't mind talking about because that place has already been blown up. It used to be a nice little hidden gem. Grassy pond. Drink. <laughs> and I couldn't get in there. I showed up at like 7, and I thought, hey, it's a little late start for summer, but not too bad. Fucking eight boats. Eight. Wasn't even a tournament. Eight boats there. It's like a 90-acre pond. So I pulled out and went down to Mountain Brook, and it sucked. It sucked so bad. And I left, and I forget where I went from there. I only went back to my original stomping grounds there. Um, you did. I remember you, did. you telling me about that. And I caught a few. I salvaged my day. Um, all right. Anyway. Um, ooh, that's a really good point, Devin, about the surgical gloves. Uh, I don't have any fishing spots in Pelham. I flat out fucking refuse to go anywhere east of Nashua. Because, fuck that road. <laughs> I hate 101A. Yep. It's a 10-mile shopping mall with 24 traffic lights between my house and the highway. That's just to get to the highway. Never mind to get to all those other towns beyond that. Forget it. I can go the same drive distance in the polar opposite direction and have 20 to 30 different ponds to choose from, and they're all good. And there's no stopping lights. And there's no stopping. There's no lights. There's no people out there. It's all quiet. It's great. You'll never find me in the Pelham area. I cannot do it. I refuse to drive through that crap to go fishing when any other direction is way better. <clears throat> um, all right. Let's talk about Beast Coast Hustler trailers because that was one of the other questions <clears throat> before we continue on to the rest of the season 2020 recap. So. I'm going to let you break the end. Yeah. That's yeah. All, you. all right. That's not it. That's it's close enough. It's close enough. It's this. It's close to the color. I mean, it's called a three inch. It's a three thin inch thin bodied swim bait. Yeah, it's it's this, but sm smoother. Yeah. I guess. And we had a couple of different ones that are closer to four inches, but we were trimming them down. Yeah, it was kind of about a half inch off each one. Yeah. Just biting the head off them. The benefit to that is you get the length that you want. <laughs> But you get the girth that you need. <laughs> uh, like the smaller Kytex and, and like all those other ones that are like those 2.8 inch or 3 inch, they're proportional to that length. So they're really, really thin and really fragile. But if you take a bigger one, you just trim the head down. And sometimes you, know, you pair uh, side cutters and you just kind of keep trimming the head so you kind of round it out a little bit. And it threads on there nicely. But now you've, you've got the small, the short length that you want. But it's a meteor profile, so it holds up a little bit better. Um, that was pretty much the gist of it. I tried it. Oh, I Do I want to pull down that crawl box? <laughs> I. Um, it's it's there's, there's enough. There's enough he tried. Yeah, I. Let me see if I can do this without making a ton of noise. I've got two cases of this, which is Big. four, uh, fifteen by seven by five basically is what it is. I know it says Senkos and Flukes, but I have two of these full of just craw trailers. Just green and brown craw trailers. I have four of them total for two for green and brown and two for black and blue. Black and blue. Tried them all. Black and blue. Wasn't a fan. I don't know. I couldn't get bit. Should have done black and blue. Should have gone slower. I have, <laughs> I have the Hustler in black and blue. I couldn't get bit on it. I will. But yeah, for some reason it just it, it didn't work, which is weird because a black and blue spider jig is my jam when the water's cold. And I've caught so many fish, and I have converted him to the life that is the black and blue spider jig. And it just works. That's actually the trailer that I really wanted to try on it. This is... <clears throat> this is my go-to. This, this is what has, has caught me my big some of my biggest fish ever most all pretty much most of all my biggest fish largies have come off this yep. black and blue with the was the um yep like a tuna can. <laughs> i don't even know what the hell it's called strike king rage car junior Ooh. yes hey um no no not the junior this is the full size. Cut it down though, so the trailer is bigger. But the legs are short. But Old the legs. Yeah, but the legs are short. So good. 
That's the one. Cast and don't move it. Dylan, I do like the spark shad. Very, very good bait. Um, but I like it for maybe not necessarily what it was intended for, but it works so damn good on the uh, Okashira screwhead. That's a good combo. Oh, I made some other baits work a little bit better. But I like that. Spark shad's good. Uh, glide baits. <sighs> so, I have Fuck thrown <laughs> my glide bait, which I was given because we helped Zach and his trailer lights. He gifted us a couple swim baits. He gave you... A shell you cracker, which, Mr. Dragon Custom Tackle, you still have that. You're supposed to repaint it for me, <laughs> sir. I would like that back, please. <laughs> and then he gave me the River to Sea, or whatever the hell it's called. The uh, S-Waver. S-Waver. Oh, I had that out. It's, I literally was looking. It's right there. I got it. You can see it. <clears throat> I, so, I literally have it. He gave me that, and I tried and tried and tried and tried, and I watched so many videos on people, like, how to use it and what temperature was, like, how long to let it sink, and I've caught a few fish on it. Nothing big. And... People always say, fish slow, fish slow. And, hello, yeah, that's I'm all I do. Fish. Can't fish slower than me. I talked to a couple of swim bait hammers, and I couldn't get them to do it. Uh-oh, right. fishing with Jake. What, what message did you retract there, buddy? No, I haven't gotten a Pats yet, but I really haven't tried. I will never pay more than retail price for literally anything. I'm not going to buy a Pats. I don't fucking care don't what it is. It. I don't need it. I yep. got this $25 piece of shit. I refuse to do it <laughs> on principle because I, I don't... You know, unless you're my best friend, I'm trying to help you out. Even then, I still wouldn't do that. No, it's fucking dumb. I pay retail. And I won't jump through hoops to get anything. I don't fucking care what it is. <clears throat> and I honestly, I disagree with people that do that anyway. Um, this is my other swim. Guy bait. I'm <laughs> trying to make work. I, I can't figure it out. I, it's another thing that I need to put more time in. I've got no confidence in either one of these things, even though I know they're supposed to work. I have gotten a lot more bites. Oh, shit. Pun. What's up, buddy? Sorry, go ahead. More recently, well last year now last year but like later in the fall i did get a lot more followers yep than when it was hot out and i just could not get them to commit when they hit it they just swipe at it and i'd miss them or i'd hook them and move them just but that's swim bait life i guess the swim bait life sir i'm just clearing the desk a little bit i'm all set with that I don't know swim bait life. um <laughs> Ah, Kraken Kid knows what's up. That's Pete. Uh, we fished him in a few tournaments last year. Actually, we, we uh, fished against... He's the one with the old Ranger, just like mine, but he's got the new Evan Rude G2 on it. Yeah, that thing's sick. Yeah. Pete's wicked good dude. Um, yeah. Firecraw Jackhammer. Funny story about that. Before the classic, when that thing became, like, the thing, Ooh. I was talking to you and other people about, that. like, wait a minute. Why don't I throw a red spinnerbait or a red jackhammer or chatterbait um in the spring when a red lipless works so good and it was on my list of things to buy and i bought it Horseshoe? yep <laughs> like the day before <laughs> they blew up and thank fuck i did because i got four of them and then you couldn't find them for like two months um and i ended up catching a bunch of really good fish on that one and my most memorable one was with derek the owner of beast coast down on canwood lake and it was my second cast of it. actually no i think it was the first cast of it first or second cast uh confident on that and we were talking about it, and he wasn't convinced. He's like, ah, I don't know, man. It seems almost kind of like a gimmicky marketing thing. <laughs> Slam into a three and a half pounder. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking sweet. Oh, it worked so good. Um, it was chatter based, though. It's, you find five, uh, oh, five to seven I'm sorry, did feet. you mean this? Yeah, literally <laughs> this exact thing. Black black and blue chatter bait. That's with the Strike King Rage Swimmer on it. That's what I caught my my second, no, now third biggest largemouth of my life ever on. Six pounds, two ounces, last spring. Yep, that was a good day. Yep, and that is uh, that is a jackhammer. I can remember fish, but I can't remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> I can remember fish from three years ago. You remember the important things in life. You're right, I do. Um, That's money. Okay, we've, we've talked about a lot of different things. Uh, target the priest. I, we'll, we'll get to that. Brett, Brett, hold that thought. Um, I want to wrap up 2020, because it's already 9, 10. Damn. Um, what was the last trip we left off with? Basically the tournaments, but the hustlers. Yeah. <clears throat> After that, it was just the water started getting a little cold. Ah, did it? No, we were still doing some normal day trips and yeah. And then I kind of bounced around. around. We were kind of. I mean, we did catch a lot of good fish. After that, and the day at Winnie when Winnie that was when double snipe. 
Oh yeah, that, that was another good day, but not like super. Man, that that should have been a memorable yeah, one. I'm surprised you bring it up. That was like July, and you caught a five, two fives or a five and a four. I caught a. I caught a. I think I caught two fours. No, one of those no, ones off that rock was a five, and the but I can't remember if the other one was a five as well no. or if it was a four. No, it was a four. I only caught one five that day. It's like five and a half and a four and three quarters something back to back cast on a drop shot. And oh two. no, the other one was three and a half. Was it? But I caught a four earlier in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I remember. That was, <laughs> that should have been another one. That was when I was wearing the little white whopper popper. Yeah, I wasn't wearing shoes that day. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really I'm like, you know, I know people catch big fish on this thing, but I never really caught a big fish on whopper popper. Next fucking cat. No, it was the same cast. It was, the same it was cast. like 10 seconds after I said that. Wham! Five pounds, two ounces. <laughs> Sweet. That was sick. Um, and those guys, you went too far. <laughs> I think the last memorable trip I had for 2020 would be the day I caught my five pounds mom off. And it was two days before he caught his. And I went up back up to the Vermont Brownie factory solo trip because I was still unemployed at the time and the weather just looked perfect. So I went and we had been on a pattern with a really heavy football head and a little itty bitty bait. And it already done well the last trip. It was like four trips. Yep. <sighs> and then I went out there and I fucking hammered him. And it wasn't even that great of a day for, like, I alone had a 20-pound bag for my best five smallmouth, myself. Yeah. Which, I think that's only the second time in my life I've ever done. No, I've had several now of 20-plus pounds with friends to, like, where we both contributed to it. Either, you know, I carried the load or friends carried the load. Him being friend. Um, <laughs> me and my buddy Josh broke 20 pounds a couple of times at the New Hampshire Brownie Factory. But, dude, I was just locked in, and I had it fucking dialed down. And then I, at the towards the end of the day, I caught that five pound smallmouth, and I was like, "I'm good." <laughs> yeah. It just, it was, and I said it in one of the videos, and for people that have been watching them on a regular basis, I said it, and I was like, "Dude, this has been the happiest I've ever been for being in a pattern because not only is it working like today and the last day, it's been working for like two fucking months. That yeah. pattern was killing it. Every <clears throat> Jesus, I can't like the last two weeks that we've gone out, we haven't gone for. Large mouth or small mouth, we went for stripers. Yeah. But for the last what, two months, five, roughly. yeah, five, eight, yeah. The last two months, we've been throwing the exact same thing, same color, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Little, little variation here but, there, but for the most part, same they, thing. Something a little darker, and it just, it just works. Dude, talk about getting lo- dialed in. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Every time we go out, we were catching... At least 15 fish a piece. Yeah. And I, I know that I said we we're going to be a little bit more descriptive in what we were talking about. Because I know we really weren't talking about too much in the videos. Although if you were watching them and you were paying attention, you could put They're it together. They're in there. You'll see it. You're going to work for it. I'm not going to just flat out tell you. Because it, it's good. And it's been good for years. But something about it this year, man, it just clicked. And it put tons of fish and big fish in the tons boat. of big fish in the boat we, we've gone out we've caught multiple 20 pound days yep so i, I would put that solo for smallies trip for smallies as my second to last most memorable day of 2020 and my favorite and certainly one of my favorite baits was that heavy football head teeny tiny little bait on the back of it um and i would say that the next trip after that literally two days later it's probably your last favorite day of the year. It was also still one of my most memorable days of the year. I like catching I don't big know. fish. I caught two thirty fours the other day, so that's true. I uh, but I like watching my friends catch big fish too. That thing was that was that. I was going through a rough time, <laughs> and that that day turned everything around. And it oh, the man. five pound smallie, the five yeah. pound smallie, and the t- three fours or whatever the f- hell we I had caught. over twenty three pounds for our best. I five boat smallie. flipped my. So right before the five pounder, I caught my my new PB of four eight eight, and I boat flipped the thing like an idiot. I got it in, and then all after that, I was like, I'm set, I'm happy, this is freaking great. And then all of a sudden, I caught the five pounder. I'm like, Pfft. I've been waiting how long to catch a five pound smallmouth? Like we've gone to the St. Lawrence, we've gone fish on Terry, we do a lot just, of places everywhere literally the biggest fucking lakes you can fish in lake ontario the most well-known places st lawrence river Where the paul, most well-known places in mueller? new hampshire paul mueller caught his freaking 30 something pound bag or whatever the hell he got yep we fished that area literally the same spot yeah. by the way yeah um that's <laughs> and insane. that's i'm pretty sure i 
dropped that that last fish. I lost that last day. I don't even want that to talk about it. Nice. It's the same area. It's almost the same exact spot. But anyway, um, yeah. And then to wrap up twenty twenty for you would be no. That doesn't count. That's twenty twenty one, buddy. What was stripers? Oh yeah, <sighs> whatever. Yeah. Um, that was still cool though. Yeah, it was. was well, no, because the very last open water trip we did was Candlewood. December 27th. There's a little video I just uploaded. And you caught that fucking 21 and a half inch, 4.3 pound smallmouth. Fucking Andrew. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> fucking Andrew. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> that was funny. Sorry, Derek. <laughs> oh, all right. So let's bounce back to the... the that, that That's 2020 to wrap. We had a lot... Of really good trips. We did a lot of new places. I finally made it to Champlain this year for the first time. I actually went twice. The second time doesn't really count. Because I only got to fish for about two hours. But I caught two good smallmouth. Fishing with Derek. Again, the owner of Beast Coast. Mm-hmm. And the next day was in, uh, one of two solo trips I made to the Vermont Brownie Factory. But, um, man. With the ex- like, Once we got out of our normal stomping grounds in New Hampshire because of the severe drought, I don't care what anybody says, that drought kicked the shit out of a lot yeah. of ponds around here. There was a pond that I, I fished. I used to fish almost every single night with my roommate Jeff, and it you couldn't get in there. It's still down. It's still down like four, three, four feet, Jeez. like just straight vertical depth. It's a fucking 30-acre pond. That's significant. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as we got out of the drought-affected area, dude, we, we just... Things went back to what we would consider normal. It, we we're like, oh, we're the quality fishing. we were hitting was definitely better, but yeah, it was just, yeah. yeah. But we put ourselves out there to know that we were gonna travel this year, and like, yep. we were gonna travel, we were gonna find the fish, and we did it. Yep. So this year was, besides the whole COVID thing and whatever, every for fishing this year was a success. Yes, it was. Absolutely was. Um. All right, let's return to the chat for a second so we can get caught up. Umbagog, that is on my bucket list. The problem is it's close to a four-hour ride for me. <laughs> Which a now is only drive. about only seen one and a half hour longer than we usually right. Travel, but that's so. that's a dog shit four-hour ride because from where I am in Milford to get to, there's only a short section of multi-lane highway to go for that whole drive. I mean, it's maybe not that short. I would get on 101 in Bedford, so for the first half an hour it would suck. And then I'd have, what, an hour and a half? No, not even an hour and a half. From there, get off. Oh, what's the most direct what do we way? Care? We took 100 miles through the woods up to freaking. Yeah, but there was literally nobody that way. Versus you have to go all the way up, like, through the heart of, like, basically North Conway. No, nah, I'm good. Yeah. And it's just, you, you got, I mean, at least there's roads you can go around the center of town. But, like, it's just a shit road. It's all, like, with the exception of. Like, 60 miles of the 180-mile ride is highway, and the rest is all single-lane, backwoods, New Hampshire bullshit, where everybody has to drive 10 miles an hour to the speed limit, and I'm just not interested in that. That's Never. too far of a drive for a spot that has a lot of numbers, <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't heard really anything about quality. I'll drive that far for quality. I'm not going to drive that far for numbers. I can go get numbers 20 minutes from my house. I'm not going to drive nearly four hours for numbers. If you told me I'd go there for numbers of fours, yeah, I'll drive eight hours for that. We have. <clears throat> we have. And we didn't. <laughs> um, I'll get up there eventually just because it's on my list of places I want to fish. But i got to plan it out. That's a long drive. I'd like to stay up there at the hotel, the Ambagog Motel, whatever it is, if I'm going to do that. And then, you know, make it a two-day trip. Probably go fish um, with Travis Rocket up like in uh, Conway. Sunday thing. Yep. And then... St- drive the rest of the way up to Umagog, stay, you know, sleep Saturday night, charge the boat, get up, fish Umagog Sunday, drive home. Because I can make the drive home after that. But doing that a single day? Mm, I'll do it to Champlain. It's a long day. Yeah. It's a long day. We've been having 12-hour, 15-hour days recently. Yeah, Candlewood. Candlewood is a 3-hour and 45-minute ride with stops yeah. in the morning. So we leave here. What time did we leave? We were leaving at 4 the last couple times because we didn't really have to be there that early because it was so cold right we got there for like nine or something yeah. like that but we were fishing by nine yeah Leave fucking my house at four in the morning and not fishing until nine like everything driving getting the boat set up loaded in drive over to the spot fish for six or seven fishing. hours and then drive all the way home <laughs> uh moose pond if you're up in conway worth oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i've heard I've actually he- about that i've one. heard of that but... 
IPAs. Yeah. What else? That's, I mean, that's it for 2020. We're caught up on chat. What is the one thing you want to work on the most for 2021? That was something I wanted to, to discuss at large. Because I know in my head what it is my plan is. So basically, you have to kind of go along with it. I don't too. really have a plan for 2020. I mean, I live my life one mile at a time. <laughs> Just wait for me to call and tell them where we're going and <laughs> what time to be up. <laughs> How's that work out? Works out mint. <laughs> For me. <laughs> hey, where you, hey, where are we going? Where are we going tomorrow? <laughs> Pretty much. No, I don't really. Not even techniques or baits? Not really. I mean. <clears throat> baits. Baits, 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 I never, I honestly have never thrown a fluke. I have. We've I've, talked about that multiple times. I've thrown it a few times, but not, I haven't spent any time on it. Like, maybe I'll throw for, like, 15, 20 minutes, like, fuck this. I'm not doing it. I just can't. Because it's like a jerk bait, but it's 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 perfect. It really is. And I love throwing jerk baits, and I love throwing Texas rig stuff. You're going to add it to your list this year, and you're going to crack a bunch of big-ass fish, and you're going to look and be like, why didn't I do this sooner? And I'm like, well, I tried to tell you. <laughs> and punching. <clears throat> oh, punching. Dude. That is you what I want. You missed to do. out on the one day to Champlain. I know. I watched the video. Yeah, but you'll be able to come back. <sighs> We're going. Dad, why didn't you bring me? <laughs> <laughs> DJ, uh, 3D underscore fishing on Instagram. And his buddy Alex took me up to Champlain. Um, when the hell was that? July or August? I, mean, like, I remember it was hot. I remember it was like six, like five or six o'clock, and you're like, fuck, I really have to go now. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so bright out. From where we were, it was a three and a half hour ride. I didn't get. <laughs> Ah, story time. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, that. But Thank God I wasn't there. DJ, phenomenal fisherman. And, like, his bread and butter is fishing shallow water. Him and I actually won a tournament a couple of years ago in the Connecticut River. 21.2 something pounds for five largemouth. Um, and I actually contributed pretty well with that with a five and a half, which also took longer. And, like, a heavy four. And then he did all the rest. He, fuck, dude, we were on him that day. But, like, so he's a shallow water, heavy gear, largemouth guy. And doesn't really go for small mouth so he's like hey come fish champlain i've got a couple spots i think have small mouth but i'm not like confident really in what we're doing up there come up and fish with me didn't you catch like a 15 pound drum that day yep first drop with a drop shot <laughs> and then i caught one that was like, it was like eight, eight nine pounds something, something like that, like that yeah. yeah um on a tube god we're fight that was fun only drum i've ever caught but so yeah we went up there and we're, we we did small mouth for a little bit and the bite was just off um wasn't just us. I talked to several guys I know that live up there, and they know that exact area, and they were in the same exact area, and they said the same thing. It was off. But then we went and punched mats. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's that was dude. That was a cool video. I Two can't wait to ounce do that. weights, sixty-five pound braid, literally floated up. No joke, no exaggeration. Forty feet in the air. Just... How many weights did you, did you even go through? Shut before? the fuck up. <laughs> Ruined. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> oh, Dylan, I've got. If it's thrown at me, I'll catch it. <laughs> God, dude, one time, one Wink. time. <laughs> I never drop anything. No one time. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> um, that was awesome. Yeah, that was fun. Punching. Yeah, I want to do. I want to go. There's a couple of places that we can go to in Vermont. They're gonna be really good for that. That's what I want to do. That's that's my plan for 2021. There's no baits other than maybe continuing to work on my glides yeah um that i really want to add to the repertoire this year i'm going to expand on my swim baits i'm not a swim bait fisherman i have nothing against people that fish like that it's just not for me uh i i don't like grinding out and forcing things but there's absolutely it's just like literally anything else in your tackle box man um you can grind out and make it work but for me i add things that excel at certain windows in the time of the year i i like the, the chess match of fishing so i'm gonna get more swim baits because you know this thing alone diving to two feet he makes several other variations and i want to get them all and a couple of different colors so i can have from waking down to like eight foot diving depths um but that's it that's all i want to expand on for lures slash techniques beyond that i want to travel we're going to do a lot more traveling this year. I know I'm 603 bass fishing. Well, we are 603 bass fishing. Um, and that was kind of the whole premise of this, was to build it off fishing in New Hampshire, which we're still going to do a ton of. But I want to travel more this year than I did before. 
Um, partly because I just want to try new places. Also because the drought was really bad. We didn't get any rain in the fall. We've got almost nothing for snow this winter. It's not going to be any different for our area this spring. Unless we all of a sudden get monsooned in the spring with a ton of rain and refills everything. This fishing is not going to be good around here again because water levels are going to be so bad. There's going to be a few small few small places that are going to be good, but the bigger lakes are going to be, I, I almost guarantee they're going to be, something's going to be off on them. Yep. Like the water's just going to be down and they're going to be, they're going to be in different spots. They're not going to know what to do. They're just going to hunker down. Yep. It's going to be really slow. Um, ooh, Zach, I will be up to Maine at least a couple times this year. There's a few spots that I can make day trips out of that I really want to do. Um, oh yeah, Dylan, back lake. I used to go there every year when I was a little kid with my, like all the guys in my family on my mom and my dad's side. And that was the guy's retreat. Go to Back Lake, stay at Tall Timber Lodge every year for like six or seven years. Oh, man, I'm getting old. <laughs> it seemed like a lot bigger portion of my life <laughs> until I really broke it down right now. Um, like six years ago. Jesus, we've been fishing together for how long? Too long. Just kidding. No, it's been a while. Um, what oh, else was that? That was a sperm. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> blooper, ah, blooper video for 2021. That actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, and yes, you are right. Back does have the small, small in New Hampshire. What else we got? Talk about Champlain. Ever been to... Mem nope, never even heard of it. Where? I can't even pronounce it. Memphrenog? Mm -hmm. Mem Wait, Mem Sounds like it's either in Maine or it's in Mass. Oh, uh, Grat84 Fishing Tournaments. Um, I can answer this because he basically was going to do whatever I did because it's my boat. I'm kidding. We, I, Everything I was thinking about for tournaments, I asked him, like, what do you think about this? I, we bounced around a lot. I apologize. We went, I was like, hey, let's fish the New Hampshire Bass Nation Trail. And then I was like, hey, let's fish New Hampshire Bass Hunters Trail. And then I was like, hey. I'm, I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Fuck all that. I'm going to try fishing New Hampshire, the uh, Bass Nation Northern Opens as a co-angler this year. And talking to other people and then my wife and ultimately I was like, Fuck I'm it. opening another one. Go ahead. I want the other one. The Foley Brothers. I've been I've been holding off on that one. Is so it... I have to have another cat one. Yeah, that's a six dollar can. You'll get that one. You still owe me twelve bucks for your pack of smokes, by the way. <laughs> twelve dollars. It was eleven dollars and change. Oh my god. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? A nasty. God, habit. that was terrible. Um. Long story short, I'm not doing tournaments this year. <sighs> I have nothing against Bass Nation. I understand why they Ooh, have. Shit. To... Nice save. Why they decided to do their trail as they did it, that said, I'm good. You alright there, Chief? Yeah, just wet. Alright. Um, <laughs> I don't like fishing Winnie. It's good. I it had a good day good. on it once. Right, and there's it's good for largemouth. I hate the traffic, man. I'm never going back for smallmouth, though. I can tell you that. Man. No, the rock bass have absolutely ruined I've that place. I've had multiple people tell me you're fucking crazy to not go back there for smallmouth, but... I'm not going back to smallmouth. No, you're fucking crazy to want to commit yourself to a lake that really doesn't kick out big smallmouth that much anymore, and you have a much narrower window than there ever used to be, where they're not where all the rock bass are. Why would you? Why, dude? I can name ten other lakes in the state. I won't because I don't want to ruin a bunch of spots. I can easily name ten other places in the state where I can confidently go catch four pound smallmouth without batting an eye. Maybe not every time, but I know I can go there and I will get at least a couple throughout one season I can from name, any one of these ten places. I can name four within a half hour from here. I paid attention to the weights from all the big tournaments at Windy. There wasn't that many big smallmouth caught there this year. So there's a lot of people that are really delusional, and I know this is going to get around and people are going to disagree with me, but I, you guys are delusional. The smallmouth fishing in Winnie is not what it used to be. It's not dog shit. It's not as good as it used to be. Oh, absolutely. You there you can definitely catch some big fish out of there, but you gotta large work mouth. your fucking ass off for it. The largemouth weights, that I've been paying attention to. The largies on there. <laughs> Dude, there's been a lot of big largemouth out of there the some last couple of years. Some people have pulled some freaking monsters out of there. Yeah. But I used to fish Winnie a ton before we had kids because my wife is a hairdresser, she works Saturdays. Um I'm home with my kids on Saturdays. I I'm not gonna give up my time my kids to go fishing on Saturday. I used to be able to fish Winnie on Saturdays, um, which was great. Dude, you'd be able to fish till like 12 or 1 o'clock before it got really bad on the water. And drive home and point laugh at everybody stuck in traffic going north. And just smooth sailing the whole way down 93. 
and most of the time in the water it was great on sunday it's an utter shit show everybody's already up there so you have a two to three foot washing machine across the entire goddamn lake you're just getting beat to shit people are buzzing by you all day causing wakes like why 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 would anyone want to do that to themselves on a regular basis fuck that you make funny videos out of it though yeah there's one video that i will lightly touch upon that you will never see you will never see it the day I decide I'm done with this channel, I will upload it with a big old hearty fuck you to that one particular guy. Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even him being a dickhead either, it was the other guy. No, that guy was a total dick. Everybody I've shown this video to is like, yeah, no, I would have done the same. <laughs> I I don't regret it one bit, but oh, hilarious. it's a bad look. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. Um, tournaments. I am very sorry. Let me stay on track here. There was a bunch of different options we were looking at. Most recently, I debated doing the, the New Hampshire Bass Hunters Trail only because they're doing a two-day tournament on the St. Lawrence River in August out of Clayton, which is where we've spent a full two weeks now fishing. I felt good about it. But I could take all that time and money and just put it into traveling. Like, we could literally go do that and go to that one spot <clears throat> yep. on the river. I honestly think we could win that if we went. I think so, too. But in order to do it, you have to join the club, and you have to fish Sunapee, the I'm first also, tournament for the yeah, year. Yeah, I'm also with that. And I'm like, ah, you know, it'd be nice, but it's, it's also, it's going to be the end of August. I don't want to go back to the St. Lawrence at the end of August. We've already done it twice in August, and it's... It's hard. It's very tough. It's not it's as easy hot. as it think, you guys think, as it's, people think. It's not like you go up there, you cast out, and you catch a four-pounder. It's it's not like that. you got to... These guys, the elites, they go out there, they do catch a bunch of four or five pound pounders but they're literally spending all day on one rock for <laughs> six or seven bites we right. met a guy what was his name van husen or something van, like that van housen um he was a guide he was a guide yeah he's a guide up there st lawrence river in lake ontario mm -hmm. and we met him at the eastern lake ontario access point um which was right next to shaman bay just on the eastern side of that like if you were to look at shaman bay and then you come down there's like a big peninsula and on the Lake Ontario side, there's a boat launch right there. Beautiful boat launch. We met him there. And he was telling us he was a camera boat for... Paul Mueller. And Corey Johnson <clears throat> out that way. And Corey Johnson, a couple of guys. Yeah. And he was like, I've been a guide up here full time, seven years now. I have no fucking clue what they were fishing. <laughs> He's like, I know that area. I think they were picking apart one or two boulders. And they were only getting six or seven bites all day. They capitalized on them and they were fucking giants. And they were catching them in six to seven foot waves. Like... Yep. It's how it we, is an, we went through that shit. More like we're not gonna fish in this. <laughs> no, <And> people <laughs> laughed at us when I that day I got. I would seasick. love to see them go out there and do that. I yeah. would love to see you guys get out in six and seven foot waves and fish. Yep, it's no They're joke. They're paid to do it, and they have to do it to get paid. Yep, we're not getting paid to do it. We're going out there because we love to do it. It's no, no, I'm not risking my life like that again. Nope. <laughs> I got sidetracked again. But yeah, anyway, I don't, I don't want to do any tournaments because I'm not a fan. I don't want to do a whole club because I just, I don't, I don't like being pigeonholed into doing a bunch of tournaments. Cause like I, I want to do all the prep work and everything. I want to, you know, run water and look for things and like put in the time and I can do that for a tournament or two, but I, I like the freedom of being able to like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go to Champlain this weekend. Or just do anything different. You're like, hey, conditions are great. Go do this at this spot. You know? Like, I'm still in that point where I want to perfect what it is I'm working on. Um, and I guess from a, a business standpoint, there's no real benefit to doing tournaments anyway either. Like, the the days of being a tournament stick and getting your sponsorships through that are fucking gone. Yeah. Unless you're literally the pros. Instagram and YouTube is... Social media. Period. Social media, yeah. Screwed you. You got... Yeah. Um, we could go. I enjoy on for hours about that. But yep. I'm not going to. I really enjoy competing, but I like to pick and choose my tournaments because I don't have a ton of time to pre-fish anyway. Uh, yeah. Anyway, there, that I I'm going to save that for another episode as one of a couple of topics because there's I have strong feelings about tournament fishing at the local level that a lot of people disagree with, and that's fine. Which is why I won't continue to fish tournaments. I would have fished a Bass Nation Open or two, uh, the New Hampshire Bass Nation, but it's all on Winnie. Circling back to the whole point about why I hate Winnie, I don't want to do that. 
and you know they branched out like a couple years ago but everybody was a bunch of bitches because it's all it's literally all the same 50 to 60 guys and they all winnie 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 that's all they want to fish because that's all those guys fish that's all they know as soon as you go to somewhere different unique like the connecticut river everybody bitches out they don't want to fish it it's like nope. branch out a bit guys god see there i go i've already gotten into that tangent <laughs> Musa. <laughs> Jesus, Sean. Fuck, it's not 93. Dylan, you were absolutely <laughs> right about that. Um, yep, rock bass have taken over Sunapee decades ago. <clears throat> yep, definitely turning into Largy Lake. Newbie. No fish newbie. I still haven't been. They call it that for a reason. Yeah. I've been. I actually just heard from a friend. I have heard good things about that. For the for the trout fishing, I've heard it's it's good. But you got to know what you're doing when you go there. Yeah. I just want to go because it's the clearest lake in the state. And the only reason I haven't gone yeah. is because the I've parking. heard the parking was an issue. Parking is horrible. Well, I just talked to a friend, and he said it's not quite as bad as I thought it was. No, it's pretty bad, so. Yeah, but we could do it. No, we get there early enough, though. It's it's a 40-minute ride from my house. Yeah, we get there early enough. We'd be fine. If we get there at, like, 4 in the morning? I mean, it's not like we're doing it all the time. We're going to do it the one time, get there. We retarded the early. Like, the, launch, be great. the launch is one road. It's, like... Two or three hundred, yeah, <laughs> two or three hundred yards, <laughs> like one road straight down to the water, and then there's like some parking up on the road, but it's it's just a clusterfuck. I went ice fishing there once, and I'll never go back. <laughs> ice fishing, I won't do that again. But I wouldn't mind trying to go there in the in the summer or spring. The spawn would be cool there. I don't even know if you can go there during the spawn. Where? newbie yeah you can no restrictions on it it's just it's the same as anywhere else oh really yep yeah. um there's a couple places it. that we've talked about that like i don't like bed fishing anymore um if we roll up to a lake still hoping for a pre-spawn bite and they're on beds whatever screw it i'm gonna stay there and i'll snipe beds for a little bit but at that point i want to see what's in the lake yep and that's why i want to go to newbie like there, there's a, a few spots like newbie for example that are just insanely clear that I want to go during the spawn just so we can get a really good idea as to what kind of quality is in there. Right. There's one spot that we've gone to now three or four times. The place you kept talking about ice fishing this year. Yes. That every fish <clears throat> we've caught looks like the scrawniest, sickliest fish I've ever seen. And I've had a few guys tell me it's good we fish there. We have caught a few good ones them. out of there. Yeah, but... Like that jerkbait day. Yeah, jerkbait day was good. That was a good day. But, yeah, for the most part, it's just like... It's really not the quality is just in there. Yeah, I don't know if it's just us not figuring it out or what. But I've only, heard, I've only talked to two, maybe three other guys that have caught big fish, like, here and there. It's, just, it's, it's, it's weird, but it's a really clear lake, so it'd be cool to be able to go there during the spawn, not to snipe beds all day, but, you know, bust out, I've got over here the flogger, and actually look down and see what's down there, you know? Like, confirm, is there actually potential here or not? By the way, don't use a flogger when there's three-foot ways. <laughs> 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 you you get you get goggle eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Smash. <laughs> um. So fishing mode. When it comes to uh, bed fishing, I I got a lot of shit when I first started doing it. I didn't know my I I wasn't reading anything online. Nobody told me. My dad didn't know. That's who I learned everything from. Was my dad and my uncle. And like we always fished kettle ponds in southern New Hampshire, which are almost entirely largemouth. I was completely unaware of how stupidly easy it is to catch smallmouth off beds. So the first time I did it and I understood like what I was doing, like, oh wow, they're on a nest and I'm catching them and this is the greatest thing. And I, I bragged about it because I was ignorant of it. And so many people gave me shit instead of educating me on it. And that, that made me very salty. But anyway, um, to your point, I, I don't like it for that very reason because it is the easiest thing you'll ever do in your entire life. That's what you do to you can bring your kids out. Correct. For one. Two, if you want to learn a new technique, and this is kind of like splitting hairs here, for lack of a better way to put it. <clears throat> when I... They're going to hit anything, but when I was trying to learn a bunch of new techniques, almost all of them were like bottom contact stuff. Uh, you know, like shaky head, different jigs and stuff. So it was boosted my confidence even if it wasn't the greatest scenario to be in to cast at a fish that i could see and watch my bait and see how it was reacting and watching the fish reacting to it made me infinitely more confident in it 
catching 50 fish in one single day doing that than I would have if I just grounded out trying to catch fish in any other normal circumstances. They're going to eat anything. But for me, I made the connection for like, I've tried a new thing. I've got bit on it a thousand times. I know exactly what I'm supposed to expect when they get bit. Now it's confidence thing. That's it. That's uh, that, and that yeah. that is the only other thing I can say about bed fishing. That's like that you can say in a positive manner. No, dude. If we're gonna do this. it. We're gonna do this. <laughs> we give the same big boy. Thing. <laughs> I threw this at beds. I did have him come up and hit it, but I let him shake it off. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. Um, thoughts on Squam? Do you want to take that one first? Squam's fun. Used to be really good. Used to be good. So, I couldn't figure out why the <laughs> hell we were struggling the last couple of years. And I heard from another guy, um, David. I'll tell you his last name later. Um, I have to be careful. I don't want to, like, publicly tell everybody's, like, whole real names because I don't know how people feel about that. So, I apologize if I'm not firmly directing a lot of this stuff. Um, I don't want to do anything without permission and potentially upset somebody. But, he was telling me that the vegetation changed. And I had heard that from the Rockets. Ooh. Because so many of these nicer houses up there are treating their lawns and all that shit's running off. It has changed the layout of the grass, the I vegetation like, there. Like that. Where it used to be is no longer there and it is now springing up in other places. So the fishing as such has changed. But I've also heard from other really good anglers that it's just not good anymore. I don't know. I don't fish it often enough. I literally went there for the first time this year in three years. And it used to be a place I used to love fishing. And for the last three years, everybody told me it was dog shit, don't go. So I didn't. We used to have really good luck there. We used to go there all the time. We used to have really good luck for smallmouth there. Yeah. Especially late summer. Drop that, it that on was, the humps. That was the first time I fished over 40 feet. I mm -hmm. believe it was in that place. That's where and you... And we killed it. You popped your deep water cherry. Oh, it was fucking great. It was yep. so deep. Video game. <laughs> to the hilt. So wet. <laughs> so wet. <laughs> It was good, though. I, I liked it. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Dylan, that's the thing about Quabbin. I would love to get there, but... Oh, the Quabbin? We need a Quabbin boat. Um, Let's get in touch with the... Uh... No, friggin' A. There's a couple of guys I know that have Quabbin boats. We can get down there. It'd be fun. I'd like to go down there. Yep. Get on with the... Uh... Oh, I can't even think of the name right now. I'm horrible. Dude's a fish all the time. Fresh. Oh, from... Fresh. Get Bent TV. Yeah, Get Bent. John and... Oh, what's the other guy's name? Johnny, I want to call Johnny. him Frankie. <laughs> Frankie. Hey, Tony. It's Tony. It's Tony. It's Tony. It's Tony. It's Tony. <laughs> he it's owns Italian fresh, thing. He owns Fresh Baits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they go down there all the time. They do good. I don't know. Do you guys steal buoys every time you go down there? Because every video I see you down there, you have a buoy. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> it's a coincidence. I want to go. I want to steal a buoy. <laughs> But it looks like a lot of fun. It's a place super clean. Catch a lot of big fish. But you need a specific boat to get out on that. Right. Or rent one. So you got to get there at 2 a.m. and rent one. Dylan, the very first video I made, and this was back on my gaming channel, Shoosty Bang, was an underwater footage. Like, my wife bought me a GoPro, and it was a Hero 3. And that was when they first came out. So it wasn't even like a 4 or the 5 route. It was like right after the Hero 3 came out, she bought one for me. And I set it up on a few beds up on um, Winnesquam. Winnesquam. I was, oh, was Josh, that the one? When I got in the water. And Josh almost lost his thumb. Yep. Yes. Yep. Dude, that was a good day. And besides, I got some. Be, besides that. Besides Josh <laughs> almost losing his thumb. That's when you had like the 20 foot pole and you're trying to hold yeah, it out. And then like, I was like, fuck this. And I got in the lake. Dude, 58 degree water is cold, guys. 60 degree water. Like, it hurt. To get in the water, but I was literally swimming underwater holding my GoPro on this, like, six-inch PVC pipe that I made. Yeah, we were um, tossing them drop shot baits and shit on the beds. and <laughs> Dude, like, no joke. Like, this is the rock that the fish was on. His beer can is the fish. Fish, me holding the GoPro. It that was, close. It I'm was, not exaggerating. It was insane. And we got some great footage, and I've tried to do it once a year ever since. We did it. We did it last year. Last, but we didn't get that many last good footage. Year. That was on. Uh, that was on Winnesquam again. Yep. Did we do it? Twenty twenty. We got some great footage that day. We almost did. So the problem was, there's a couple oh, of shots yeah. where I accidentally, I thought I wasn't recording, and I turned it on, and we I ended up not recording footage, it. Man, though it was still a good day. It was yep. Still cool. Yeah, it was good. We, did, we had them, the male and the female. 
That was a great shot. That was insane. It was like a four and a half pound smallmouth. Beautiful mark. Big female, and then the male kept coming around and like pushing her back towards the bed. Yep. And like that was that was cool. Uh, Drink. Uh, ah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll get I'll get more footage of that because that, that's fun. But I I also made better tripods because that's the problem. Like trying to set a GoPro down onto a bed is difficult enough, but to get it to stand up just right and have it angled like that's hard because you don't have a preview of the screen unless I actually get in. I really don't want to get in the water again. It's cold. Dylan, if you look back to last year, we have that footage. That's what we're talking about right now. Yeah. If you just search, like, you go to my channel, you search uh, 603 Bass Underwater. I think I've got, like, four videos of that. Something like that. I have a few. It's so. the same thing that Tactical Bass did. Literally the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. So I mean, they probably said words, but we didn't. Nope. <laughs> uh, the most recent one I did. We talked a little oh, yeah, bit about right. it, and then I just cut to all underwater footage. Yeah. There's a couple of shots that we should have had, like, amazing magic flick drop oh, shot footage. Oh, man. And the fuck... I, I tied... So what we did was I had this, like, crazy, magic like, U-shaped clamp for my GoPro. And I had this old socket for replacing a wheel bearing on my um, freaking Mustang when I was in high school. That is still kicking around. It's like a one and three quarter inch socket that I, I electrical taped to it to keep it weighted down. And then I tied on, you know, the orange buoys you toss out when you're fishing and you want to mark something. I wrapped that around it so I could pull it back up. I dropped it, throw the buoy off to the side, and then back up 10 feet so we knew exactly where to cast. The fucking rope from the buoy kept coming right in front of the camera. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, just be like, it's <laughs> it. right there. And we couldn't see shit. It just ruined every shot, so. It's tough, but it was cool. It was. It came out really good. But now I've got a better idea for how I'm going to do it this time, and it's it's going to work. It's it's going to be a lot better this year. And that's really why I want to go to a place like Newbie. I want to go somewhere, like, stupidly clear so we can get, like, really good shots. I'm thinking about buying a tank and just... Yep. And just going down and spend an hour down there if I can. Incognito. What's up, buddy? Yeah, that would be, that'd be mint. But... um. All right, I'm going to turn over to the chat at this point. Is there anything else you have for questions? Because at this point, it's getting late. It's 9.45. We're, we're not just, this for an hour and 45 minutes. We're just rambling now. Yeah, we, we covered 2020. Um, wouldn't quite give it. I might, yeah, I'd give it like a 7 out of 10 on the year. I, I did get laid off. That sucked. <laughs> but Fishing-wise. Fishing-wise is pretty good. Fishing-wise is pretty the first third of the Pretty season was kick-ass. The middle third of the season sucked. sucked. I don't know. I I did catch... Mm. No, that's an outlier. You have to look at it from the grand the grand scheme. The overall picture. Oh, I am. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> and then the last third was awesome. Uh, but man, that middle one. Pre-spawn tactics. That's a good question. Uh, lightly touch on it. Pre that's going to be a, a really good topic for a separate stream. Yeah, pretty much. Dude, that? Just just keep looking. Not necessarily these. Oh, here's another one. See the size one. of that? Here's another one. Look at this. Light jig heads. When I'm in the pre-spawn, I'm working quarter ounce and three-eighths ounce heads with three-inch swim baits. Were phenomenal for me this spring. On days that we were struggling to get bit, I'd put fish in the boat. And then uh, Shaky Head was also always killer. Chatterbaits with small swim bait trailers on the back. Really good when the wind kicks up. Spinnerbait, mm, touch and go. It depends. It's very uh, condition specific. But I'm looking for dark bottom, soft bottom areas. Like black bottom. Because that sunlight hits it, it warms up fast, and the fish fucking stack on it. And then steep banks. Rock if you piles. Can, rock piles. If you can find a steep, rocky bank, literally butting up against a super shallow flat of black bottom, you have hit the fucking jackpot for the spring. I tell you that. <laughs> Especially if it's the old, like, dead lily pad beds, where all the stalks are dead and bent over each other, but create this, like, dense bed. Money. And the jig. 2000... I don't know. Fuck, what year was that? Was that 17? 18? <clears throat> Where are you thinking? PB. 2018. 2018. Wait. No, it was 2019. Was it 2019? Was it in the Ranger or was it in the Skeeter? It was in the Ranger. 2018. So it would have been spring of 2018. 
March. Still snow on the ground. We snow blowed the launch three days before we went fishing. This we right had to here. snow blow a foot of snow off the boat. This Not a foot. I think it's like a half foot. Exact thing. Which I always throw. Seven and a half. In 30... 36 degree 36, water. 36, 38... 36 degree water. Not moving it. Cast it out. Let it sit. Every 15, 20 seconds. Make it, make it do this. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Pretty much it. That and the my spider jig. Just and a twin-tailed hula grub on a 3 yep. ounce football jig. Dude, that is it. I... How many fish have I caught on that thing? Jeez. How many fish have you watched me just crack on that thing? None, because I do this. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. A lot. Any new species thinking about targeting this year? Ooh. Um, I would like to catch a PB pike. That would be fun. I would. I have a spot in New Hampshire. I have two spots in New Hampshire that I want to go to. And... It's a pretty good possibility that I'll catch a PB if I hook into one. Because I missed one last year. Yep. With Kristen. Oh, my made, God. Made me pee my pants out of my butt. That. that was funny. <laughs> There's the three of us. Holy Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I was uh... ripping my jig back to the boat and this freaking pike. Dude, it was. <laughs> j -j 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 giant. Giant. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind trying trout. So there was one last trip I made. It was the last trip to the New oh, Hampshire yeah. Brownie Factory with Jim Rocket. Yeah, I wish I was there for that. And all of the trout and landlocked salmon. He Jim caught one. I didn't. Uh, I only caught a rainbow. It was the biggest rainbow in my life. It was some, anywhere between was four huge. and five pounds. It was huge. Fat. And they were all cruising like a foot of water. And there's a reason why we're up in a foot of water despite the water temp being like upper 40s. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that another day that we'll, we'll get, you guys wait for the fall for that. Um, there was a very specific reason we're up there and I realized like, holy shit, there's a ton of trout and salmon and stuff up here. And Jim caught a really nice salmon. And then I caught a, uh, that rainbow trout. Do we still have that spy? Uh, yeah. Right here. Literally on that. Uh, actually it may have been, I think it was the smelt pattern one. So it's darker than that. It's more brown and just a darker color. Just that. I, I was working it in a foot of water, and I was slow rolling in a spinning, rate, or a spinning rod, and I turned around, and I felt full. I was like, oh, shit, and I set the hook without looking. But I turned my head, and I saw my line go from here to 15 feet over there in the blink of an eye, and then turn around and come back halfway in the other blink. I've never, like, I, I don't target trout, so I forgot or didn't have appreciation for how fucking fast those fish are. Holy really shit. Fast. Dude, it was the most incredible thing. And then I realized that, like, now I know why you can't keep them this time of the year because of how easy they are to catch. And that's something that I would like to go try again just to see, like, I've got a few other ideas I think will work for lure and do. We've seen some big trout i like in the spring especially dude. i've seen some giant lake dude. trout like the size of this freaking table yeah I mean, we're talking <laughs> like 15 20 pound lake trout giant giant fucking lake trout giants and there's no questioning it mistaking it nothing they're in one to two feet of water 20 feet from the boat giants yeah they yeah and I want to try and catch one. I've never caught a lake trout up shallow like that and I keep trying every year I hooked a good one one year like six or seven years ago lost it so anyway that that's one and then because of the last couple of trips we did last two trips i do want to target stripers again because holy shit that's fun <laughs> dude it, i was telling you i've been going been. striper fishing i would go by myself i drive an hour and a half to the beach by myself or one of my buddies would come with me and they just hang out while i sit there and fish and they get bored they go get food at the boardwalk in hampton or wherever and then I still sit in there fishing until it's dark, and when you hook into a striper, oh man, it's so much fun. Especially so much fun. Last few trips, I'm almost tempted to go back down there again this weekend. It's but not like that when you're normal striper fishing. No, I know, but you know, the last two it's weekends not. we've had good luck. Last weekend was kind of slow, but I, I had a guy, um, Bruce, incredible tournament angler in New Hampshire for 
many years in sorts of salt water um and as unless i'm mistaken he's dabbled in salt water for a long time and now it's switched like pretty much just to salt water and he gave me a tip for how to catch him because not this past weekend the weekend before all the stripers were they were stacked 20 feet high but they were on the bottom and all the rest were trying to get to the bottom but they were just they were so dense 20, I mean, was, 20 foot thick for a, a freaking mile but it's not like 20 feet thick of like fish, 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 fish. It was like, like condensed, just super dense. The graph is showing a false bottom. Yep. So that's how thick they were. But this time they were very clearly 10 feet off the bottom, and we tried. Andrew figured out a couple of cadences that was finally getting to bite at the end of the day. But Bruce put me on to an idea, um, totally different, very light line in the whole nine yards for those specifically for when they suspend like that. So there's a part of me that kind of wants to go back and try again just because, dude, catching two pound stripers, ca- like catching a fucking four pound smallmouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, especially, my God. Especially is that when you fun? catch him in the butthole. <laughs> so, as a part of me wants to go back and do that. Uh, any interest in tuna fishing? <sighs> yes. Yeah. I do. I want to go. I want to catch a goddamn tuna. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm nervous about going back out in the ocean. I'm not. Just because I got seasick the one time we went. Oh, yeah, that's right. For that the haddock sucked. and cod, which you weren't, was fun. It, well, You weren't that bad, though. No, but it wasn't that bad out either, and I still, like, it hit me. How many yeah, times it was, was those it? rollers, though. That's what got you. Yeah. What, I sit down, like, five or six times? Yeah. And you were, you were like, talking, all of a sudden I just sat there and stared on the horizon. Just, you'd ask me a question, like, uh-huh. Just, I didn't trust myself to talk, and... It wasn't like on the brink of needing to fucking upchuck, but it was it was close. I I've, so. I've gone deep sea fishing and I don't get seasick. When we were on Lake Ontario that time, that was bad. And he got sick. He started to get sick. It was the weirdest thing because it was so calm, but you got these these rollers. It was so weird. They were. I started perfectly feel, spaced and consistent. Yeah, I started to feel oh, a little fucked up. The same. boat. Yeah, because they weren't even that tall. It was like three foot waves. Yeah. But the boat was in a perpetual, unbroken, mm. consistent yeah. roll. Yeah. There was no flats. Yeah. Like those waves could not have been any more perfectly spaced for my boat. And the whole time was just this steady. There was no flats. There was no topping out, no bottoming out. Just it never stopped. Just a pussy. That too. <laughs> and I exacerbated the problem he by looking in down the Navy. <laughs> at, my, <laughs> at my phone the whole time because that was when my motor was giving me issues. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and I was trying to figure it out and I was calling people. So for like an hour, I'm looking down like this and yeah. rocking back and forth. And then I, I kind of sat up. I was like, I've seen that motion before. Buddy went up the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, buddy, I don't feel good. I think we're going to go in. And as soon as I hit dry land, I felt a thousand times better. And we did go back out, but we went to the river and I still didn't feel great. Um, that was the day you got skunked, wasn't it? That was the day I got skunked. That was the day I caught the four nine. Yep, that was the only fish of the day, dude. First spot we pulled up on, five minutes into fishing, three feet of water, four pounds nine ounces off one rock. And then if you haven't seen the video, you should you should watch it because I I literally was said it, it day my, three, the three or four. I think it was actually five. It was okay. towards the end of the week. And I heard I said I was like we we're going along this super shallow flat and I saw this one giant rock. I was like, dude, fuck, that's see, that's the kind of rock we should be casting at. That's probably the one that has giants on it. And I flicked my drop shot as I'm saying it. Oh. <laughs> Thing took me for a ride. Bro, we're alive. Hey, hey get out of here. Uh, I just wanted to show you something. Say hi to YouTube in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Alright. I gotta go. Hey. <laughs> fuck you, Kate. So <laughs> it was um yeah, I didn't remember. Sorry. So, yeah, uh, I would like to go deep sea fishing again in tuna. Tuna, but I would be all about. I've wanted to do it for so long. I gotta be prepared to upchuck. Uh, yeah. okay. I'm gonna chuck up. Do you get worried about Ding. the salt water in your boat? Eh. Uh, where we were fishing, it's mostly fresh. And he verified it by drinking it. So Yeah, that was the dumbest thing I think I've ever done in my life. Eh, a lot of questionable things you've done, but... <laughs> Questionable people. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't wrong. Uh, it's still there. <laughs> but it burns. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I heard you when you were peeing there. I have never fished in Rhode Island. Um, but if there's a spot worth fishing, no, I lied. We're going to fish Rhode Island this year. That guy Brian I was telling you about. Where stripers? are we going? <laughs> 
<laughs> Not allowed to know. It's classified. <laughs> Speaking of other fish we're going to catch and stripers, we're going to... I'm going to take oh, up this tog? guy, Brian. Huh? Tog? No, that... Yes! Tog! Two tog fishing is something that I want to do, but no, that is not what I was talking about. Um, Damn. There's a guy, a uh, subscriber of mine, wicked nice guy, we talk a lot. He's from Rhode Island. Um, I want to make sure that's not you. That'd be funny. Zfish01. Hmm. You're not Brian, are you? <laughs> <laughs> he invited us down. He's got some good striper spots um, in the spring, but it, it coincides almost identically to, like, in a normal year, it'd be right during the spawn. Which I'd be great with, because I don't want to fish the spawn anyway. So it'd be great to go down there and catch stripers when all the big girls moving up. But the last two years, the spawn has really shifted hard. So, like, when they're running down there, and it's like, that's where you want to be down there, it's been, like, fucking muddy pre-spawn bite up here. So I have a hard time pulling myself away from that. So I'd like to get to that, and it will be down Rhode Island. I'll go. I'll we'll go. see. I know you're going to go. I'll I already told him you are coming with, and he was like, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. Um, if, you I don't wanna, know. if you want to laugh, bring me. <laughs> uh, all right. I mean, it, it, dude, it's basically 10 o'clock. So any parting questions here before we wrap it up? Um, if there's a good one, we'll go with it. Otherwise, I'm going to take notes. I've already got a few topic ideas I'm going to roll into future live streams. What I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do for next week. Um, maybe we'll talk ice fishing. You should totally give us ideas i'm talking about you guys yeah give us ideas and i don't care where you do it it can be here it's going to be saved i should be able to see it if you want to hit me on facebook you want to hit me on twitter instagram i don't care where you throw it at me throw me ideas we're going to incorporate it you can throw it at him too if you don't want to talk to me i don't care yeah i just want to reply (laughs) (laughs) he'll read it (laughs) i'll always be like yeah okay (laughs) rocket league (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. <laughs> Not. <laughs> nope. Um, I'll give it like another few seconds here for any questions potentially roll in. I didn't. By the way, if you're watching, but for whatever reason you cannot comment on YouTube, I have my phone. You saw me check it several times during the stream. If you want to hit me up on Facebook or Messenger, Instagram, I don't care. I'm going to try and check it and keep up with it. It's definitely a little bit more difficult. I'm actually going through right here. I'll actually, yeah. Uh, I think I had somebody. Hey, look at that. There's actually a comment right there from one of the guys who I was talking about, David, uh, from when we were talking about Squam. He's a Squam guy. He's telling me about the change in the vegetation. So, and he actually just commented. <laughs> Forget about the rain. He got a lot. There's a lot more rain up there, but down my way where I do my fishing, southern New Hampshire, southwestern New Hampshire, not a lot of rain. I mean, it was very different. Like you look at the drought map where it hit extreme levels. Like that's me, and that's where the majority of my fishing is done. So different animal. Um, the the drought was widespread, but the severity of which of where it was was drastically different from county to county. Oh, the drought. Yeah, that was terrible. So. I think that's going to do it. I haven't seen any other questions come in. So there's that's... Tw- there's 21 of you. There's, come oh, wait, 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 wait. Fish Spofford Figure before. it out. I have fished Spofford exactly one time. And it was good to me. Um, but that parking situation sucks worse than just about anywhere else. Like Newby? No, you haven't been to Newby. Um, worse than... Oh, yeah. No. Cause, so the problem <laughs> is there's only six or seven trailer parking spots. And if you don't get one, the nearest spot you're allowed to legally park is like over a mile away. So basically, if you don't get a parking spot, you don't fish. At Spofford. Yeah. And if you don't fish there, the next nearest place you can fish is the Connecticut River. I'd rather go Down there. at Hinsdale. So it's like, it's not like any of the other ponds you go to are like, oh, this place is busy. Let's drive five miles or five minutes down the other way and fish a different place. It's like, nope. Yeah. It's a half an hour in any fucking direction to find the next available spot to fish. Ugh. So it's like, if you, if you go there and you, and you can't fish... You're kind of you fucked your whole morning. We're very fortunate where we live, like our location, because we we could literally travel a half hour in a three hundred degree circle in in any direction, and we could be at five hundred different ponds. Yeah. Well, oh. not that many, but a lot. Yep. We have unlimited options here. Um, Dylan, more reservoir. Uh, I've actually driven by it once on my motorcycle. I keep debating going back just for Pike, but I, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go. This this live stream just got five minutes longer. Um, 
15. Jackson, at the Beer Bottle Bridge on Winnie, do you mainly drop shot? I do a bunch of things. That was one of the things I didn't mention. Is that the one? Ha. For memorable moments. I didn't even touch on my fucking 7 pound largey. My PB largey. My biggest largemouth of my life was caught at that spot, which I'm sure you know. I'm a little embarrassed by this, right? So I bought that, $125. Oh, it's not a Gary. That's true. I bought that, <laughs> $95. Bought that, it's $45. Hang on. Three of 15 I own. That's $75 right there. Want to know what I call my PB large on? <laughs> About ten cents a strike king. <laughs> I'd say three and a quarter cents is right there. <laughs> Fucking Cinco. Yes, I typically throw a drop shot at that spot because it works so damn well. Nedrig also kills it. The day I caught my PB largemouth was another memorable moment. What? Wasn't that cool? Yeah. Nah. Was on this stupid thing. And I was already throwing the drop shot and I went through I was fishing a texas rig specifically because of something down there and it wasn't panning out so i went from the east side to the west side of the bridge didn't work out and i was just coming back under to go to the east side i looked over and my 360 was lit up with bait fish and I was like, wow and i'm looking down to see if i can see them because the way the sunlight was coming through and the way the bridge cut it it created this like 15 foot wide window where i could see with just the most utter clarity you can imagine through the water and I saw this fucking blimp of a fish. I was like, you gotta be. I remember saying, that. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> in the video. I spent the next 17 minutes, 13 or 17 minutes, I forget now, throwing drop shot, Texas rig, the whole nine yards. Pick up this stupid fucking thing, Nico rigged, with a 330 seconds ounce tungsten weight from Beast Coast, thrown into the head, and a little one knot with a little wire uh, guard, um, extra wide gap. Like, drop shot hook. First cast. Seven pounds, five ounces. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> that was a nice fish. It really was. And, dude, the moment I hooked into it, I knew I had something big. Until And then it turned its head and really dug. And then I was like, in my head, I'm thinking to myself. But I didn't want to believe it because I just... He knows. I don't have to explain it to him. You have to understand what has gone through... What I've put myself through, and what has gone through my head the last three years, ever since he caught his seven, of what I've been trying to do to catch my first seven. Or just to break my PB, not even seven, just to break my PB. I've caught two, and it was literally, my second one was the exact same fish. It was the I fish. I have <laughs> multiple pictures showing the markings on its side. It was the same fish. Multiple people have looked at both pictures, and we all agree... Without a shadow of a doubt, it was the same fish. Um, Insane. And it was bigger the next year, too. I finally <laughs> hooked into that fish, and I was terrified. Because I was on 10-pound braid to 10-pound fluoro with this little teeny tiny hook on my six foot nine medium heavy spinning rod. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, dude, if you watch the video, you can see how hard bent over the rod was. That was insane. Oh, my God. And I, it, I it really wish, wasn't that bad of a fight, but I got I it in the boat. I so wish I was there for that. I wish somebody God. was with me with, for it. Like, especially you, because you know how much that fish meant to me. Right. How much time I put in. Dude, That literally that whole week we were talking about earlier in this stream, we, you know, we were throwing these and i caught four um nine four pounders in seven straight days of fishing seven days yeah because you know you had that that stretch there that was that yep. what that was part of that yeah this day and i, mean, I that, the, the, that was the whole point like the window was right i went out specifically targeting big bass i committed to that in a six and a half inch swim bait and a 6.8 inch kai tech and I don't even remember what else I was throwing. I was after a PB. I wasn't just after a big fish. I was fishing with the intent of catching a PB. And I couldn't get it done. And it killed me. This was the most fishing I've ever done in my life. Period. I fished a lot before I had he kids. Get, he gets stressed out and he gets... I know how he gets. <laughs> I, I fish the back of his boat more than anybody. The desire as ever. <laughs> and I've dealt with him at his lowest low. <laughs> I know how he gets. And for him to catch that fish, oh, God, I wish. 
just I just wish I was there for that. It was like a blur. Just because it finally happened. I could like yeah. it's just like <gasps> the whole time. <laughs> I would have hugged you. <laughs> <laughs> I would have embraced it. <laughs> like, come in here. Bring him in, buddy. Because I know how many times he's hooked into a big fish and has lost it either at the boat or haven't even seen it. <sighs> Say Lord's we just had shit luck with drop shot because drop shot sucks cock. Stupid drop shot. St. Louis River, two years in a row. Yep. But that's the only thing you can throw there, really, that's going to get bit. Yeah. Ooh, not, I mean, that's not true. You guys are in for a treat next stream if my baits come in. Do you remember those, like, ridiculously lifelike goby baits I showed you? Oh. I bought them. No. Oh, yeah. I bought enough for the two of us in case we were going back to the river for that tournament. The tournaments, because um, my buddy TJ, Smallmouth Freaks, invited me up to the St. Lawrence like three or four times last fall, but I couldn't go because I didn't have a job and it was just timing didn't work out. We're going this time. You didn't have a job when we went in last. <laughs> no, I know, but like that was already bought and paid for. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, but like we're going back and we're going to go during prime time. We're going to go in the like, middle of summer and end of fall we're gonna fish That's why off, i'm not doing tournaments off an aircraft carrier yep and we're gonna it's gonna be like two days like if two nights like drive make the six hour drive friday night fish saturday sunday drive home monday or something like that or drive home even sunday night i don't care it's gonna happen and i got some big baits for that if you, if you don't know um tj it's he's smallmouth freaks he is a On freaking hammer he is a hammer dude knows what he's doing big time wicked yeah. nice guy too one of the nicest guys i've ever met very very genuine Yep. Um, what else we got before we call it quits? Yeah, definitely something about that Necker rig. Uh, I actually had pretty good luck with that this year in general. Oh, thank you, Jackson. Yeah, I got lucky that I got the GoPro on that fish as it swam under my boat and released it. Two years ago, Rocky Lake Spinner Ray. Yep, I remember that. Um, do I remember that? I'm pretty sure. No, I'm thinking about you guys. You had a really good spring this year, fishing mode. That was um on Squam. You had a couple wicked good days. Oh, fishing mode. Mate. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, it's ten ten. It's getting I, late. I, I have to be up at four thirty in the morning. I'm gonna have to work tomorrow. Fuck that. Nah. I might go ice fishing tomorrow. You might ass. charge up the old GoPro and do it. Break in the old Garmin. I have to get up and work. And uh, yeah. Anyway. All right. So this is awesome. This first stream went off really well. There's a lot more people here than I expected. Both. To start at peak and even at the end. There's 22 of you watching right now, and I I, I seriously cannot thank you enough. This was this went off way better than I was anticipating. I was hopeful for this. This was good. And I, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. More than anything, constructive criticism. If there's something we did that you just were bored to death by, please let me know. If there's something we did that was awesome, please let me know. Uh, feedback from customer, you guys being my customer, is critical to continued success. There's obviously a certain point I'm not going to cross. There's some things I won't change, but you know, for the most part, there's something that I could either elaborate further on or shut the fuck up about <laughs> and move on from sooner. Dude, let us know. Fuck up. Yeah, everything like this. <laughs> Feedback is always helpful. And again, you know, anybody, I haven't looked yet to see who did, but anybody that shared the stream, thank you. I'm not joking when I say that, that growth from community support is the single best thing for driving growth on YouTube. So anybody that does that, like don't undervalue how valuable that one action is it is huge thank you when i see a when when we see like likes and follows and all stuff it's not it's not just like oh sweet we're growing our shit and like no it's not it's like we're we're reaching out we're we're doing this because we love it like yep. this is us this is what we do like we don't just put thousands of hours in a year just to you know, try to impress people no this is what we do this is what we love to do yep my passion so it is. i'm glad you guys all tuned in greatly appreciate it i'm glad we were able to hopefully entertain you for the last two hours this went on a little bit longer than i anticipated i was thinking hour to hour and a half I have no problem in the world with it going two hours because it didn't feel no, forced God, no this is great it's yeah, fun it Love worked it. and i had a few tasty beverages to wash down with it not so. gonna lie i was a little nervous coming on here but yeah i saw that coming i think we did good you did fucking phenomenal it was a little easy for me because I've been doing this for so long. Your Corona smells but better than You mine. did fucking phenomenal. Yeah, yeah this fun. is pretty good. Well, I had a couple beers and I haven't drank in months. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to my tail bit. off for weeks. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Bottoms up. Ah. Oh. You're absolutely right, Fishing Mode. fish and beers.
Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it, buddy. Go check out Dennis's uh, Facebook page. Bass, Bass and, beers. and Beers on Facebook if you're curious about what people are drinking and while they're fishing. Dennis has got a good page going. Otherwise, thank you all very much. Greatly appreciate it. It's probably going to be a slightly awkward ending because my computer's way over there. And we're way over here. So I have to go hit stop over there. But we appreciate everybody tuning in. Every Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be back. Again, hit me up in any avenue you can think of or want to that you've got for suggestions for topics. I have already some ideas for next week. It's going to get easier as we get closer to open water. One of the things I really want to talk about, which actually might be good for next week because we're already getting pretty close to open water, is talking about pre-spawn fishing. Immediate ice out bass fishing. What do we throw? What do we recommend? The whole nine yards. Because you need to be shopping like, mm, now. Skipping drip baits under ice. It works. <laughs> Trust me, it works. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> All right. Thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. And we will catch you either in the next episode or next week in the live stream. Whichever you prefer. Either way, we're happy to have you. We'll be here Thursday. Thank you all for watching, guys. Appreciate it. I'm going to go shut it off. Have a good Bye night, everybody. Bye again. See ya.